you, thank you. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, everyone. What's up? Thanks so much for tuning in for another week of Wind Down Your Weekend. Um, I'm really excited once again to be here. Uh, I'm Shannon, a.k.a. Small Press Shannon, here at Bad City Comic Professionals to tell you about all of our amazing, incredible books that came out this week. And as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Wednesday Phil. Hello, hello. How's it going? It's going good for me. How's it going for you? I can't complain. I don't like this cold weather, though. Yeah. I'm not a cold weather person. Yeah. I like hoodies, and I like I like wearing them, but also if I'm still cold, it's It's, it's just too much. It's tough on me. Yeah. I, I was built for warm weather. Me too. Yeah. I'm um, <laughs> sorry. I am sharing this. It looks like it didn't change the name of the show. It didn't save your name change. Uh, but oh, yeah. But we are winding down the weekend. We are not uh, coming to you from the fridge. Um, <laughs> but also check out Tales from the Fridge. Thanks. Because that shit is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that I do with uh, my good buddy Lisa from Austin Books and Comics. And we are talking uh, each each week or every other week or so um, mm -hmm. about all of the cool things that affect, uh, you know, women and all of the underserved voices in the comics community. And it started because both of us being in comic book stores are constantly getting to asked by people mostly women are mm -hmm. there actually comics written by women are there any female artists um are there female characters that are cool and we both hear that all the time and then immediately followed yeah but that's a new thing right when mm -hmm. you tell them and so lisa and i were talking about it over and over again and we were like you know what we just need to go like through time and just talk about everything we know about females in comic books and then any other voices that we feel people aren't hearing so uh, we just started doing a uh, history of females in comics. Okay. So we just did a golden age of women, and we talked about all the female characters that you might not know from history um, start starting in the golden age. And so we kind of, like, put the Wonder Woman and the Black Canary and um, Catwoman and Lois Lane all at the end. We were like, you know these characters, but right. you know what? Like, listen to all these other ones. And Lisa and I have a bunch of new favorite characters that we Ooh. need to, to be... Uh, working working through really quickly i'm i'm on a hunt for a lot of amazing like lady satan I need to find some lady satan comics whoa soon. that's a golden age character that is a golden age character dude the the women wow. in the golden age were all <laughs> badasses like there's a uh, one character who the, she's like because every other superhero like female superhero a lot of them were like oh it's like the dame who like dresses up and like fights stuff in like her bikini right. and there's this one where it's like, like one moment where it's like, oh, you know what? This girl who was already like super fit and super hot and known for all of that decided she was going to dress up like an old classic horror witch with like the hag mask oh, and the what? black hat and the, the dress and strike oh fear gosh. into the hearts of men. And I was like, me too. <laughs> I'm in for this. Uh, okay. So, uh, Golden Age women character sounds <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. <laughs> um, Chad brought up, and I definitely think we should throw this out um, immediately. I don't know if you heard this, but Anne Rice died yesterday. I did not. Yeah, Anne Rice uh, passed away. Her son uh, posted a whole thing about that she she passed, and so Chad said, you know, it wasn't a good weekend for him because that is his favorite author of all time um and my mom actually said her too and i actually mom i immediately thought of you uh because my mom's always that interview with vampire is my mom's favorite movie and i know it's also one of her favorite books so okay. i immediately thought a uh, thought of that um but yeah so you know thanks for all your great books and rice and all your great stories yes that's a shame yeah um but just a reminder to just uh, love all the people in your life and tell them um, you appreciate them being there and that you and love and care for them. Um, and it's a, you know, we'll do a toast with this wine that we're drinking. Yes. This is Red Dragon, which is a Tempranillo, uh, which I've never had before. Uh, we were at total wine and we were passed by the sign that like describes like what all the wines go with and what their flavors are and matt and i were like well these are all the flavors we like but we've never even heard of this wine before so we had to grab this to check it out so and what is a that first word the temper tempranillo it is a spanish red and it's supposed to be peppery and um good with Ooh, like all, all of the foods that matt eats 
And Blackberry. Blackberry. I think that was another one like that they said was a big thing in it. Um, and we mm-hmm. asked the guy like for some suggestions on some good ones, and he, this was one of the ones that he was like, I mean, this one looks cool, and we were like, that's pretty much what we were going with was that it looked cool. So yeah, yeah, um, that that logo is pretty cool. Yeah. The dragon so. in the red tuxedo looking thing. I can definitely Looking taste all on this pepper. It's good. Mm-hmm. I, I, like I actually it. like this one. It's a bit intense for the heartburn. I'm, I know I'm going to feel this one later. That's the pepper. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> uh, I like the taste of this one. Yeah. Oaky and fruity. Oaky and fruity. And, pepper. and I think mm-hmm. the oaky part is what's appealing to me. And that's a, this is aged in the oak mm-hmm. cask. Oak so casks. Yeah. I like it. It's good. I like that it's not too sweet. Like, you can taste that there's the fruit in it, mm-hmm. obviously, because it's wine, but it's not, like, overwhelmingly it's sweet. It's subtle. It's a subtle fruit flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm on board. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my gosh. I wonder if all Tempranellos are like that. Well, we'll find out, because we'll have <laughs> to explore more of them. We found a whole bunch that we were like, okay, these are all, like, in our live stream price range, so we can we can okay. explore some more. So. Right. Well, it'll, it'll be an experiment. I do appreciate the cheapness of wine. Yes. That's what even the guy at Total Wine, he was like, well, what's your price range? We were like, cheap. Yeah. He's like, what's <laughs> cheap? And we were like, we really like those $10 bottle of wines. Yeah. And he was like, all right, my people, I can help you with this. Like, He's like, that's how I feel about wine. And I was like, well, we drink the entire bottle in less than three hours right. uh, yeah. during our live show. So it doesn't make sense to spend more money on it. But... Uh, yeah, uh, Gomez made the say, a similar joke to what you were saying earlier, Phil, with that's the wine Anthony Hopkins drinks when he has yeah, someone over yeah. for dinner. <laughs> and that's immediately what I thought about was that movie. Yeah, if you don't know, that's a um, reference to Silence of the Lambs franchise. Did yeah. you actually say Tempranillo? No, just the Red Dragon. No, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> The Red the, Dragon. Yeah, it was yeah. The title. It was the, yeah. Um, so cool. So we're going <coughs> to uh, jump into some comics and. Uh, we are going to try something a little different with yes. all of our trivia questions and stuff. We are going to do one prize at the end, so you have to stick around to the end to win. Um, but we're going to ask you some random questions throughout the night just to get you excited. I will say, before we go into any comics, it is the week of No Way Home. It is very important to us that you do not post any spoilers, any comments, any oh, thoughts right. at all in in the the chat. Uh, if you know Matt and I, and I believe Phil hasn't even really seen it, but we don't watch trailers, Matt and I, so we oh, don't yeah, know yeah, anything yeah. Um, at all. Anything you could possibly think, everybody knows this. I actually don't. So I'm very excited to keep it that way. So uh, don't even mention the movie in these comments, period. And uh, same goes for Hawkeye, because I know a lot of people haven't caught this week's episode. So don't spoil things for people who um, aren't caught up. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so... That said, Thanos demands your silence, so do we, and we're going to talk about some hot new titles. Uh, First up is Daisy from Dark Horse. Uh, This is the first time I've seen a Dark Horse series in a long time that's going to be more than four issues. So Really? Yeah, this is a one in five, so we're moving up. We're moving on up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is like going to be an ongoing. I still think Dark Horse is holding off on ongoings until they know who's taking over, like purchasing them, and who's going to be who buying it. Because that just doesn't. You can't really sell things if you got a lot out there. Um, but this is interesting. Did you get to read this? I did not. This was like at the top of the pile, as I was trying to get down to the end here. Yeah. This was. It's a Daisy. Is it's a. I opened it up. I couldn't remember why I wanted it. I read, I bought it out of the solicit and I was, you know, obviously for the store. And I remember thinking, I'm very excited about this book. And I could not remember why. And then it came in and I looked at it and I was like, I still don't remember why. (laughs) Okay. And so, but I did, I did read it. And so, um, it is, it's very classic dark horse in art, uh, for one. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm digging it already. Yeah. And it's, um, the story of a girl named Daisy and we're, Uh, She lives in this small town, and we're following, in this issue specifically, we're following a a woman who is looking for her son who went missing about five years ago, and she follows a a lead. She gets a phone call, and it tells her, like, you know, your son says to tell you that grandma misses, like, his grandma misses her. Well, the grandma's been dead for years so the mom's like i have to go to this place and like it's a lead you know obviously they know enough about her family they didn't just see like a flyer 
and calls. So she's following it. But it's interspersed at the same time with somebody telling a story of the angels and giants of like an Old Testament style story. And so okay. when I opened it up, I was like, you had just asked me if like there was a lot to read this week. And I was like, oh, there's not that many issues. And then I opened up this one and I'm like, this issue is so long. There's no way <laughs> Phil's going to get to this issue. Uh, it's so wordy. And it's the, the, the half that's like the story of... Um, you know the Old Testament kind of stuff. It almost, it reads very much like Jason Aaron's the the Goddamn. Oh, okay. So you can't really oh, get through it quickly because you're like, I have to like evaluate what I just read, um, and then it, how it connects to this modern story that's going on. But uh, Daisy is, as they describe her, a special girl, and you can see from this uh, double page spread that she is in fact a giant. Yeah, of this a is kind of cool. I like. I usually like these double page spreads where you have to turn the turn the book. Because uh, I feel like you can just cover more. There's actually more than one book that did that this week, which was shocking. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I thought this was, um, this is really interesting. I'm definitely intrigued. Much like anything at Dark Horse, um, it's going, it goes places really fast and also sets up, like, a really strange, I have no idea what's going to, like, what is happening in this town, but I can't mm-hmm. wait to see it. Um, and it's, it's one of those books where it, like Jason Aaron's The Goddamn, it's going to be a lot to read, like, every time, probably, but the story is really strong, and the art is incredible, so you want to kind of follow along and see where it goes. Okay. Yeah, it does seem like in the beginning there was a lot of words, but I'm, yeah. I'm definitely curious. The art is appealing to me, and I've always been a fan of the kind of, we're going to give you two stories mm-hmm. running parallel, two completely different times, mm-hmm. and somehow it's going to interconnect. Yeah. But I feel like with everything that you've said, this may be an ambitious thing to accomplish in five issues. It might be. Um, there's definitely somehow the connection of the like angels and the, the giants and how it connects to now. Um, and there's this creepy like overbeing that they keep talking about their, the like dad mm-hmm. but dad isn't like just the dad it's some kind of like father figure who um you kind of get an idea who he might be by the end of issue one but you are that just makes so many more questions and so many more oh my god what is going to happen in the next issue okay. so good cliffhanger for sure on the issue end of issue one so you're in yeah all right thar looks great I'm yeah. definitely on board. Dark Horse always has great art. It's true. They have strong mm-hmm. art background. Um, Phenom X issue two is out. Um, if you don't know, this is John Lugazamo's book uh, that he is doing for Image Comics. And who's his? Does he, he has a team of co-writers, I believe. Yeah, I think it's a couple of... Uh, you need to see that first? Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's him. Uh, oh, Aram Rappaport. Uh, Joe Misiak, I believe is his name. And Damien Slattery. Slattery. And I I know I've heard of Rappaport and Slattery before. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing with Amelia Clark, where it's like we're gonna you're gonna help with a lot of the stuff. And it seems like in these books, he's more of the dialogue. Yeah. Like because it's very much how he talks in a lot of movies and even in interviews and stuff mm-hmm. so it's definitely fits to what he's doing but i think the overall story is probably being being done and and two i mean you know it's about storyboarding and mm-hmm. um you know kind of writing in like the script format so and it's it's a very i'm very excited we have it we don't have a lot of latin x superheroes mm-hmm. in general um, there's not a, there has not been a lot of representation, and if there is, they usually end up being secondary characters. Right. And so it's not, and that was a big thing for John. John, that was why he wanted to make this book and why he wanted to make this character, because he felt the same thing. You know, he's been around the comic industry for a billion years now, because it's like Spawn was what. 30 years, 25 years ago when the Spawn movie came out. And so he's been, you know, friends with Todd and reading comics and hanging out in all that world for all this time, and probably before that, but we as, you know, outsiders know for sure that his interest has been around since then. And and to just see that in all that time, there hasn't been that, like, there's been a lot of change, but, you know, still not this strong character that he felt identified specifically with, like, the Puerto Rican culture and his culture. And so to give this character, um, 
a chance to shine and come out was a big thing for him. And so he created this character, and we get to see a lot more of his background in this issue, too. Um, we see him connect with his child, um, kind of in that dead shot kind of relationship. Like, he's kind of in a Task Force X kind of situation. Right. And all he wants to do is see his child and protect his child. And so he's he goes into you, to that role, and you kind of see that, but you also see the backstory of how the program that created him as a superhero got started. You kind of see a little bit of um, this Amanda Waller character that we saw in issue one, like really um, kind of tearing him down and yet building him up all at the same time in this issue. So we're this universe is expanding pretty quickly um, and giving us a lot uh, to fall into. And I, I almost feel like John Leguizamo was upset that he wasn't cast in either Suicide Squad movie, and that's part of why he made this book the way it is. <laughs> Um, I, I think that's totally fair. It does definitely read like it's going to be a Suicide Squad mm -hmm. book, which I'm okay with because I think that'll be appealing to a lot of people who are maybe this is their first comic. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe uh, other uh, Latinx um, people who have never read a comic, but like, mm -hmm. oh, I love John Leguizamo. Yeah. Let me go check it out. And, and it's kind of something that we as comic book fans know is appealing to people absolutely so I, i'm totally okay with them going that route and i kind of hope they maybe start doing this a lot more it seems like this could be a trended image mm -hmm. of like hey let's have let's get these people who aren't in comics but are to some degree household names because uh, you know amelia clark was game of thrones yeah so and terminator and star wars and everything else yeah that's right <laughs> oh she was in star wars yeah she was She's in, in the uh, solo movie Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was great. And I I mean, if that's going to bring more people into comics, then... Yeah, let's do it. I'm fully on board. Yeah. And I was I was a little weary at first because they announced, Image announced both this book and Mom from Amelia Clark on the same day that Boom announced Berserker from Keanu. Oh, wow. Uh, it was all done at the retailer conference during the ice storm. And then... Um, and then we also, you know, this year saw the guy from Battlestar Galactica, right? The one shock from Aftershock. And so we started to see all these celebrities and we're hearing about more. And in the publishing industry uh, for novels, it's it's very, it's almost impossible to break in. You know, um, they say the average literary agent for novel representation has about 1,500 emails a day and less than 15 minutes wow. to check that inbox. So if they don't have less an assistant. Less than 15 yeah, minutes? So if they don't have an assistant to go through and read all those queries that they're getting, yeah. then you're just, if you don't hook them instantly, you're not even going to get through that first step. And then... Your query has to is usually leads to them asking you for a couple chapters, and then they have to like those couple chapters, and I that see. usually takes months for mm -hmm. them to read those chapters. And then once they've read those chapters, they either say yes or no. They take on more. They could read the whole book and say never mind, and then you go down there. But then you see celebrities like writing books, right. and I'm put that in quotes because a lot of those celebrities don't write their books. Some of them do. Like Hilary Duff is huge into writing her own books. That's so awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I love knew that about I knew her. you would. Look would love that mm -hmm. as the reference of the why I chose that one but um <laughs> you have all these celebrities who you know like Snooki wrote a book during the height of Jersey Shore and you have all I of these things and it's it's it it makes it harder for the people who are trying to break in when the agents and the publishers attention are on the celebrities so I got a little nervous that all of the small presses and indie publishers were like oh well let's just have celebrities build books because then it was like, ooh, so is that going to take away from the creative team. a creative team on it or a creative team trying to pitch something similar? Like right. if I came in and said, I have this great idea and it was the mom book almost essentially, like, would you pass on it? Because Amelia Clark has the same thing. So we got a little weary, like, on from the creative side of it, like from right. the writer side of it is like, oh, is this going to start pushing, like, people who are trying to get into the business from being able to do it? But at the same time, as a reader and as somebody who loves people le learning about comics, I was like, but this is so exciting because, like you said, more people yeah. are going to come. And honestly, it hasn't, like, I feel like it wasn't, we didn't see this mass rush of 700, you know, celebrities making a book immediately. Like, it didn't yeah. change that to just be like, oh, well, now we're just, like, the celebrity publishers. Um, so it, it hasn't really created that firewall. 
Um, but it has enthused more people about books. And so I'm excited. And it gets you, like you said. Um, I love that, you know, both John and Amelia put their names on books that had such powerful messages. Right. And I love, love, love that. And yeah. that was a big thing for why I love Amelia um, for making Mom and for and John for making this. Because it, it does, it makes people want to pick those books up and then they see that message. Like mm-hmm. the amount of people I... I put mom in their hands and said, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones wrote this. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, well, yeah. then I won all three. Right. And it's like, yes, and then I'll go read it and learn what it's like to be a woman in America. Yeah. And the same for this. Go read Phenom X and, you know, get feel that representation uh, from somebody who's actually from that background who wants to have their voice heard. Yeah. Um, something that n- n- nobody speaking of Game of Thrones I guess as a segue <laughs> uh, Dark Knights of Steel issue 2 is out from Tom Taylor who comic book news just signed an exclusive this week with DC Comics really mm-hmm. can we get the the round of applause for that <laughs> I know you're not a big DC guy over there but <laughs> but uh, is that all he writes for no he writes he was writing he's writing Dark Ages for Marvel right now too and Deceased yeah. He, he's he the did, guy who did Deceased. He is yeah. the guy that did Deceased, yeah. yes. Um, I mean, he is primarily more so lean DC toward right DC now. anyway, but I kind of like that they secured him. Yeah, because that means we're going to see more books coming from him. Yes. So that's exciting. Um, so congrats, Tom Taylor. But Dark Knights of Steel is an Elseworld story in the DC universe that is literally just Game of Thrones in the DC universe. Um, it's cool to see all of your favorites. In this issue, we actually see that... Uh, Black Lightning is one of the other kings of the area. So, oh. yeah. Uh, so I'm really okay. excited about that. Gomez, yeah, I can make... Let me make sure I still have part one, um, but I will look into that for you. Gomez, it's awesome. I, I haven't had a chance to read this issue yet, but that first issue is, is fantastic. And I'm a huge Elseworlds fan. Uh, that was kind of some of the early stuff I got into when I got into comics. And... So I'm I'm fully on board for this. And this one kind of touches on one that I liked as a kid. It was called Speeding Bullets. Mm-hmm. And it was basically if Kal-El landed in Gotham yeah. instead of out in Kansas. And he is adopted by the Waynes and basically experiences Bruce Wayne's life, becomes Batman, and ends up having Superman's powers. And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I've always wanted to see this. <laughs> I've always wanted <laughs> to see like, this. You're like, this is, yes. And I like this because, you know, it takes those characters... Th- the thing about DC is that they are archetypal characters mm-hmm. at this point. Um, you know, we, we've we built out... DC Comics has been around for 80 years. And so... And they already... The characters were built around archetypes back in that time period. Right. In the 30s and 40s anyway. But they became the archetypal characters mm-hmm. uh, that so many other comic characters are created off of. And so it's great to see that you, you can stick them in another time period and things don't really have to change for their character. Um, you just kind of change the costume and the method of how they do it. Yes. And, you know, like Harley Quinn's the court jester, <laughs> yeah. and which yeah. I love. <laughs> And um, you you have all of, you know, like Superman. And the way this story works, if you don't know, if you didn't read Dark Knights of Steel number one, is um, the when the Krypton is going to explode, they actually, Jor- Jor-El and Lara also get off the planet. And when they fly out with Clark, um, I guess kal because they're the L's at that point. Uh, when they fly out and then they crash land into Earth, it's in the medieval times. Right. And people, all those, like, you know, soldiers of one of the, the, the ki- and the king of one of the castles in that area see the crash and assume that there's, they're being attacked. So they go out there and Jarrell just, like, attacks all of them and just becomes the king of this. And that's all, like, page two. Uh, of issue one. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, like, giving you any of the story away because the story is actually you fast forward to their their you know teenage years and now you're watching as Clark um Kal-El specifically in this um is watching his his parents rule and is still the good-natured person that Superman is but doesn't understand that his parents aren't um right. which I really really like because I like that we are getting to see a uh, the We've never really known, like, you know, we're all, it's always 
idolization of the L family because mm-hmm. they did die before he was born. And so so many Superman stories idolize them. But when you see a lot of the times and they go back and they talk, they're like, they, your dad wasn't actually a great person. And I like that we're going to take that on even in this Elseworld story, like where he is actually raised by his dad. He's going to uh, maybe see that he's not the best. Yeah, and I'm also kind of on board for that storyline as well. Yeah. And I'm just really excited about seeing all these other um, characters come in, like Constantine as a prophet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had, like, they kept describing a banshee in issue one, and it's Black Canary. And so you're just getting all of these, like, how would you refer to these DC characters in the medieval times? Right. Um, Guma says Gotham by Gaslight is his favorite Elseworld story, and he loves the Red Sun story. Yes. Um, if you have a favorite uh, DC Elseworld story, drop it in the comments. There was, so Speedy, I would say Speeding Bullets is probably my favorite, but there was another one called um, The Blue, The Gray, and The Bat, and mm-hmm. it was Batman and the Civil War, Ooh. which was very weird and even had one of these like nice embossed covers. Uh, but it's it's a pretty fun one. And then uh, what was the Red Rain? This is the other one. It's a really great Batman design. Yeah, we have a whole section of uh, the square bound books that are half off, and it features a ton of the Elseworld stories. Oh, really? Yeah. So they're like two bucks. They're like, yeah, it makes them super cheap. They're like two, three dollars. Oh, in the back stories. issues? Yeah, yeah I've. I've I bought one of those a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you peruse them often. (laughs) Yeah, that's the section I go to (laughs) every once in a while because I'll always buy an Elseworlds book. If I if I don't have it, I'll 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 pick it up. Yeah, I'm already like I can't wait for this one to be in trade. I want to know what it's gonna look like. Yeah, and the art's great. I'm fully on board. Yeah. Um, Laura and other stories, except there are no other stories yet. Um, Yes. By issue two, Gilliam March. Uh, who you may know from Carmen, and also the artist on the current Joker series done by James Tynion. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a blaze. A blaze. Yes. Uh, really th- stepping it up. I gotta be honest. It's true. Blaze has been doing a good job it's recently. True. Um, and I love this issue. I was a huge, huge fan of Carmen. It was my Halloween costume, so obviously I was. But what I love about this is that Laura is just... There is no supernatural element to this story. No. There's no, like, mystery. There's no murder. This is literally just a girl who fell in love with her best friend, and her best friend didn't like her back. And now she's dealing with the fallout of trying to... Become like just become the person she needs to be without the idea of being attached to that that guy. Right. And I love there's a quote on the back of the book that's actually featured in the story that she keeps talking about like oh my heart like it's broken it's overwhelmed it's feeling all this stuff and she, the guy that she's talking to is like the heart is just an or like hates break it to you Laura but the heart is just an organ that pumps blood. Yeah. And I was like that's so important to like remember sometimes like. Yes, it feels like it's broken, but, like, also, it's an organ. It's going to keep... It's still working. You're still moving. Like, you can keep going. And right. As much as you feel completely destroyed right now, like, you can keep going, and you should. Yes. And that's what I, I do enjoy about this book is, like, it, out of all this crazy stuff that we're going to be talking about, you know, superheroes and, and ghosts and all kinds of crazy stuff, it is nice to have this one book in the pile where it's real world, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, like, overly dramatic, but it's very much like, oh, my God, I've experienced these things as a human before. Yeah, you're like, last week, actually. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, I've had these feelings before, so it is very nice to have this very grounded real world character, and she's, I really enjoy her as Mm -hmm. a character. I I think she's, she's wonderful. There's a lot of really great supporting characters in here. Um, and it's just, it's Gillen March. I yeah. mean, I'm such a fan of the art. I know, and I know that Gillum is Italian, I believe. Is he Spanish? He, I know he lives in another country. Um, I'm sure if you know in the comments, you can tell me. But I was curious, I think he's Italian, and I was intrigued to see, I wondered if he had a translator, because when you see the list that she, she makes a list of all the characteristics she wants to develop, and in the art, it's actually in another language, but in the story, right. it's it's in English. So I was like, I wonder if he has a translator for the story, the script. But he does do, but it says he does his own lettering. So I was curious though, because when he draws it out, he's drawing yeah. it in the other language, and so I'm, I was just really curious where that process is and how it works. Um, 
because if obviously he's thinking right in the form and so i'm like does he write his scripts originally in another language and then translate it on the computer like i just i found that fascinating because at first i was like what's on the list and i was trying to look at it in the picture instead of waiting for her to tell me her to tell me like as a reader because mm-hmm. i'm impatient i was like i want to know what <laughs> she wrote and like the list is right there and then i was like i can't read this list yeah and so Um, Which I love. It makes the art... This is why comics are so cool. Because you can look at the art and not only do you get something different about the character, but you can also get something different about the artist and the Mm -hmm. creative team uh, through it, which I just... I freaking love that. Yeah. Yeah, this is is definitely a book I think everyone should be checking out. If you've ever had your heart broken, this is the book for you. Or if you are the friend who always... (laughs) <laughs> it's trying, it's stuck, yeah. like, it's stuck with the friend, like, if you're the friend who's always trying to pull the friend who has their heart broken out, mm-hmm. you also love it, because Laura's best friend, who's one of the supporting characters that Phil is talking about, is constantly in, ev- like, both issue one and two, we see her constantly trying to come up with ways to get Laura out of, like, yeah. her mood, and I'm usually that friend. I'm usually like the, hey, buddy, but let's go do this. <laughs> and like, we're, like, like, let's make a plan together. Like, yeah. let's get it, let's get it going. And so I love seeing Laura's friend in this book because she's constantly like, okay, well, I booked us an entire trip. We're going out of town. It's going to be fun. And Laura's like, I don't know if I want to go. And she's like, well, I already paid for it. So we're going on this trip and you're going to have fun. <laughs> like, come on, it's going to be great. And like, she just keeps trying to be optimistic. And there's that one scene in this issue where Laura's like, why are we friends? <laughs> like, we don't have anything in common. Why does this work? And she's like, I don't know, but it does. Now deal with it. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is how I feel with most people I've been friends with in my life. Yes. I feel like up until now, because beforehand I had never really had a lot of friends who read comics Mm -hmm. so a lot of it before i was just like why why do we hang out (laughs) and one is because we don't have a lot of common and sometimes you just really piss me off (laughs) (laughs) you just genuinely piss me off but i love you in a weird way (laughs) um and realistic uh, yes exactly (laughs) yeah Yeah. um yeah i i think it's it's definitely worth checking out it's one of my favorites and gila march's art just always always spectacular Uh, Buckhead, issue one from Boombox. Okay, so I actually just found out this week that a lot of retailers don't even know the difference between the boom imprints. So (laughs) I feel it necessary to once again explain that Boom Studios has three lines of comics. Uh, One is Kaboom, which is for younger kids. It's middle grade and under. One is Boombox, which is young adults. And uh, the other is, of course, Boom, which is for their t- adult titles, or not adult in the sense of, like, risque, but just made for mm-hmm. people older than teenagers. Teenagers and up, I guess. Um, and so this comes from the Boombox line, which is their teen line. And uh, Buckhead feels like a, a technological Stranger Things. Okay. Um, like, it is a, a kid... It starts with a, a couple that's, a, you know, like, they're explorers. They're, like, archaeologists kind of people. And they're, they're going and they're looking for something. And then something happens and the, the, the guy and the couple disappears. And then it flash forwards to, like, you know, years later. And now we're following a teenage boy who is the son of that couple. Okay. And they're living in this town... And he, they just, like, him and his mom just moved to this town. He's got to go to a new school, and he meets a friend. And everything's really weird. Like, it's kind of almost, like, Stepford wives feeling. feeling. Um, okay. Like, there's everybody, like, certain, most of the people in the town have, like, these weird tattoos. And there's a point in there where he's passing by a house, and, like, the, the boy that he's with is, like, there's nothing there. It's just a lot. Mm-hmm. it's an empty lot and he's like no but there's a house like there's literally a house right here and he's like what are you talking about it's just an empty lot and then he goes to school and he makes some friends and he finds out that there is um some weird stuff going on in the school like there might be some underground he he calls it gaming systems there might be just some some weird stuff that's happening in the school um it feels like I said, very, like, fans of Stranger Things would like it, but also, like, techno fans would like it. Okay. Um, 
because it's not techno, <laughs> like, not techno music, uh, like technology fans and people who like um, books about stuff like that because it is, it's sci-fi in the sense of like the computer sci-fi um, and and obviously this is somehow going to rope back into the, the missing person from the beginning and the connections there. So there's a big mystery that's starting to unravel and, uh, or starting to get exposed and these kids are going to have to unravel it. And if you read Spectre Inspectors, you know that Boombox is really great at giving us kids trying to solve, like teenagers trying to solve mysteries. Yes. Yeah. That seems to be a very very popular trope right now mm -hmm. for me so i didn't get a chance to read this one but it's definitely a must read because it is boombox yeah um i really like the art but so far based on what you're saying and kind of looking at this little back which i'll show here in a second this kind of feels like maybe like scott pilgrim and stranger things yes because i noticed his shirt in the very beginning said interested and then had the, the big the no. the big no symbol it's so, very like i said yeah, he thinks cool. that there's like a video game that's being like done under the like like they go into this computer lab at the school that nobody's allowed to go in and he finds like a com he he thinks it's like a game and he's mm -hmm. like oh we have to play this game but like weird stuff starts happening when they're playing the game so of right. course he wants to like break into the school and come back and play the game again when I initially read the synopsis for this and saw that it was from Boombox I was like oh I'm gonna order the shit out of this book yeah <laughs> um, and I'm glad that I did because I think this is gonna be a really really fun one and yeah if you're a fan of video games if you're a fan of like computer hacking yeah any and stranger things like this is going to be your book and i know a lot of people like even when specter inspectors first started coming out they were like oh it's boombox like that's the kitty one right and i'm like no first of all it's 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 ya yes but if you're not aware of how many ya books are the greatest thing ever yeah. like you're already missing a huge section of literature so don't be scared by the boom box title just know that boom studios has never done you wrong in any capacity probably yeah. and here's another book to check out also i like the whole i like the just boom box it's a great name it's a great name it's fantastic so right boom box kaboom you're already, yeah. you're naming your you're, stuff you're right. doing everything you need to do to pull to pull me in before i even look at the title of the book i'm like yeah sure whatever yeah i don't whatever even you need to know. Uh, My Bad from Ahoy Comics. This is issue two from Mark Russell, and uh, Phil's already lost it, which tells you everything you need to know about this issue. I love the chandelier. I <laughs> it's love such a stupid character. Oh my gosh. Oh what? my gosh. Uh, so My Bad is Mark Russell's parody of superheroes. <laughs> Which is great because Mark Russell has, of course, written many a superhero story. Is yes. current, co like still writing superhero stories. But he, this is a Hoy comic, so it wouldn't be a Hoy if it wasn't a giant parody of something else mm -hmm. in the world. And Mark Russell is writing a parody of Batman, essentially. <laughs> uh, but he's called the Chandelier. He is a a millionaire, billionaire. A uh, character who is from a family I can't even say it seriously it's from a family of people who invented or uh, like ran like the biggest light store like yeah. lamp store and like lamp industry he his family has all of the money so he became a superhero called the chandelier yeah. and he wears a giant <laughs> chandelier that actually lights up on his head when he's fighting crime. <laughs> he also has a giant chandelier at the entrance to the cave to get in. <laughs> it's just like, it's it's great because it's the opposite of Batman, but this character is very much like Adam West Batman. Yes. Like, it's very comical and goofy, and... It's if you took Adam West character from Family Guy and put him yes. back in the Batman suit. Yes. And told him <laughs> yes. to go. Yes. And, and that's really what you get, because he's like... Like, there's a scene in this one where he's, like, fighting a guy in the diner, and the guy's like, why are you beating yeah. me up? And he's like, why, why did you tell them my secret identity? And he's like, I don't know who you are. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm not in a costume. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not a superhero right now. I'm just a dude. And everybody's like, is that the rich guy, like, beating up this poor man just trying to enjoy his sandwich? And I also like, love that he went and did shakedowns with villains, and he goes to one, and the first one is a character named Pig Latin. Yeah. And and he's like, oh, and he has a language that's undecipherable. No, <laughs> oh, 
my god, I was dying laughing when that came up. So I was stupid. like, this is like, so great. Um, I like that there was a character named Tone Deaf who yeah. told a really <laughs> offensive joke, and he was like, that's really uncool, man. And I was like, oh, because he's Tone Deaf. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I feel like Mark Russell just sits in his room laughing at himself oh, as he's yeah. making these up. Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, oh, man, that's not ridiculous enough. Let me go a little further. Yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> ah, nailed it. There it is. Uh, I just, uh, I really need to have a conversation someday with Mark Russell and be like, what is it like in your head? <laughs> like, yeah, it's um, amazing And when I read it. This, to me, is him, like, flexing the muscle of his writing abilities. Because this one... Like, start to finish, I'm laughing in every one of these little short stories. Because mm -hmm. it's three little stories. You get the one with the chandelier. Um, my favorite character! <laughs> <laughs> I forget his name. Oh my gosh, go back. It'll tell. I but think he said it at the beginning he again. He only. Um, Maybe he did it. He only stops minor traffic crimes. <laughs> yes. He doesn't even. Like, there's literally somebody getting you know. carjacked. And he's he like, doesn't. there was no cars today for me to yeah. take care of, so I just decided to go home. I and love that he was standing above the highway on an overpass, and he was like, come on, someone crash into something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, that's all I do. Yeah. And, and he ends up in this terrible situation with the ultimate villain, and... He's just having a conversation with him, like, on a rooftop while he's trapped in the trap. <laughs> About like, how circus peanut butter works. That's the worst candy. I really feel like we should bring this back out in a few minutes as a pick of the week because uh, this was a fault of ours to not put it there because yeah, we literally my bad. can we can laugh about this. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, but... Ahoy, Ahoy and Mark Russell have proven to be a, a dynamic duo all of their own. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You just keep giving Mark Russell all of the books at Ahoy because he gets to do whatever he wants. And I'm so glad that they picked up Second Coming and it led to even more books from Mark Russell coming their way. Yes. And if they just want to um, have this as an ongoing, I'll read it forever, forever as long as you continue to be that funny in every issue. Speaking of the most ludicrous books on the shelf, yeah. Gods of Brutality issue three is out this week. Black Caravan. Black Caravan. Another one of those publishers. Well, imprints. Mm -hmm. um, could, yeah, they're an imprint? They're an imprint of Scout. Okay. Um, just always, always good stuff. And this, this story, you have a, a famous rock star who goes to hell and must be saved by Thor and Hercules. And by rock star, we mean a hair metal oh, band yes, rock yes. star. Not, not anybody. And like that's still playing. It is not in the 80s. This is a man who's like still trying to play hair metal rock. Yes. And he calls himself a rock god, so the other gods have come to save him. And they keep thinking that he is a god. They call him the god of rock uh, the whole time because they think he's like actually like them and is an actual god. Um, but they are working their way through hell, trying to mm -hmm. get back out. And um, every issue tries to up the ridiculous level of the yeah. issue previously. Yeah. Yeah. And it succeeds in doing that every issue. Uh, issue two, they fought, uh, they fought some were ants that yes, were the -ants. like militant Nazi were ants. Yes. And uh, so now we're fighting, they were. Champion, they became champions of the mud witches yes. to try to stop the people who are attacking, killing people in the murder room. Mm -hmm. Didn't even try to come up with a name for that. They no. just went straight with murder room. Murder room. That's, um, nice. that's all you need in a book like this. It's all you need. And so they, uh, Thor and Hercules, well, I think it was Hercules decided they were not doing it at all. Mm -hmm. And um, Nick, our god of rock decided one of the witches was really pretty and uh, the most noble thing a god can do was help hotties like them, according to him. <laughs> and so, uh, they wouldn't be good gods if they didn't. So, and I love that Thor is trying to figure out which one is hot and kind yeah. of like goes through <laughs> describing all of the witches because they're like mud witches so their hair is like crazy with sticks in it. And he's like, well, the one had nice braids around her stick, I guess, <laughs> like kind of thing. And uh, it, it just gets more and more ridiculous as it goes on mm -hmm. and honestly 
I was telling somebody today, this is one of those books that if you liked Barbaric yes. and you're in a like, oh my God, I can't believe Barbaric doesn't, doesn't come back until February. What do I do in the meantime? What you do in the meantime is you read Gods of Brutality. Yes. Uh, and you just go with it because it is it is absolutely the book to fill that hole of uh, ridiculous. I can't even describe to you in any other word the way to these characters. Yes, and also the character designs, like the two characters in these, like I love the way they look. Um, the mud witches are just wonderful. <laughs> I actually, wonderful. my favorite thing in this entire book, and I can't wait. And I'm gonna. I'm sorry, because Matt, I know hasn't read this issue yet. But my favorite thing in this entire book issue was that at the very beginning, on the first page, he is talking about how Thor is obsessed with Led Zeppelin and only wants to hear the song about ice and fire. Oh my god! And I thought that was the greatest thing ever because if you watch Thor Ragnarok, you know that a uh, Thor is they they only play like three songs in that entire movie over and over again and so I love that they made like this little MCU yeah. knock to Thor uh, at the very beginning so uh, that was a, a great great joke uh, to tell you that they are paying attention to comics uh, and they are fans <laughs> yeah. of things as yeah. they read them. I highly recommend that. That could have also ended up as a pick of the week. I, I almost think. put it in there. Both of those books in picks of the week without yeah. even asking you, and I should have because it's we, okay. It's we okay. we should have. Um, speaking of Scout Comics, oh, and that beautiful soft paper that they yes. use. What is this witchcraft Scout Comics? Uh, this is Third Wave ninety nine, mm -hmm. and it's uh James Hayek who is the CEO of Scout, I believe, one of the founders of Scout. I always forget what his actual role mm. role is at Scout, but he is one of the, and he actually has uh, watched these videos before. So James, sorry if I just got your title completely wrong, but thank you for uh, helping Scout Comics exist. Um, and I love it because Scout does, uh, Scout is in Florida, and this is a book that takes place entirely in right. Florida. And um, it's all about a young boy who is a troublemaker, and he gets kind of the way to not get kicked out of school and all of that is he has to get a job, and he goes to work at a surf shop. And you think that's what the book's about until the second half of the book when you realize there is definitely more to the story than the first half of the book led you to believe. Yeah, so I was kind of reading this, and um, I... What what was the Disney movie? Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami was all I could think of when I ordered the book. So I was sitting there thinking like, okay, this is going to be like the Johnny Tsunami origin story. Like the early <laughs> days of him learning how to be a surfer. But, you know, he's there's going to be the, the romance with the, the cute girl on the beach. And, you know, very much like a teen drama type thing. Yeah. And in the second half, you're like, oh, okay, mm -mm. this is going to be something completely different. This is different. like an episode of Baywatch Hawaii. Yes. <laughs> like, it's yes. totally like, it starts out as like, oh, here's your family-friendly story at the beginning. And then it's like, and now we're investigating this giant mystery. <laughs> and here's where we're going with it. And you're like, what did yeah. they just do? <laughs> I, and you don't see it coming at all. Like, no. Nothing in the writing, nothing in the storytelling leads you to believe that that's where they're going to go. No, and now I'm like, okay, well, now I need issue two. So, congratulations. I need to know if he's going to... I need to know what the backstory is. I need to know how we got there. And that's really the thing that's drawing me in, is I just need to know how we got to this weird shift in the story. Yes. And if he's going to come... If the main character... if the, Who I thought was the main character is the, ever coming the, back. Yeah, the young if boy. Matt, the main, yeah. yeah, the young boy is going to have any role in the story anymore. And see, I feel like I'm leaning more the other way, where I'm like, I don't want to continue if I'm not getting my teen drama. Yeah. Johnny I Tsunami. I feel like you will still get your Johnny Tsunami, because they made a big deal about his character. Right. And so I feel like you're still going to get that, but I think he's going to, it's going to be Johnny Tsunami gets swept up into something bigger by the end. And it's the two mm. stories might connect. Okay. So... Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I do like it. I, there's something appealing about it, and I can't quite figure out what it is. Yeah. I don't know if it's the characters in this book, you know, like the surfer dude, which I can't remember his name, but you know, he's got the long blonde yeah. hair. He's like very surfer type. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Right, and also I don't know if I trust him. 
I'm not sure well, about him. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, even the very beginning where he was like, oh, we, like, well, we have come to our meeting. And then he's like at the meeting. He's talking about the free shirts and all this stuff that they have. Yeah. I was like, I don't even trust you right now. So, Nisi, I did. Oh, I didn't. I was like, ooh, why is this guy? Like, he, that's too much. Because he, because he signed the kids' papers. Like, he does a lot of nice things where you're like, oh, this hey, is just like a dude who made mistakes, who wants to pass on what he's learned in life to this yeah. younger kid. See, I thought there was, I thought there was a weird thing going on. So now I'm curious because now there is a weird thing going on. Yeah. And now I'm like, is now it? I feel like I missed all the cues. Yeah, go back. Yeah, go like back I have and to reread read this one again because yeah. I definitely had no idea that that was yeah, coming. Yeah, I had online. a weird feeling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, um, let's talk about this book because <laughs> it was not my favorite. Um, this is Lunar Room from Vault. This is issue one. I like the premise. It I, is okay. What is the premise? This is a book about a girl who was a werewolf but somehow lost her yes. power to transform. And okay. also is a book about wrestling. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was just like a setup. Like this was just the scenario that's taking place to introduce these characters and bring them together. Or if this is actually yeah, what is going to be I the main focus. I don't know if focus. it's going to stay that way. I just know this is about a werewolf and she really wants her power back. I'm going to interrupt really fast because I want to answer this question in case Margarita has to get off. Uh, Margarita asked, do we ever uh, review comics from local creators? And the answer is 100%. All the time. That's our favorite thing to do. So if you have a comic and you want us to read it and talk about it, please, please, please bring it by the shop. Um, and we can talk about carrying it in the store. And Phil and I can talk about putting it um, on the, the show. So I just wanted to jump in really fast to say that in case you have to go. Um, but Lunar Room. Yes, Lunar Room. Werewolves. There's mages. Yeah, there's like, but not, and nobody's good at any of the things they do yet. Uh, so I don't know if that's like, you know, for arc development. I don't know if we're going to see her like get her werewolf. Mm -hmm. This is a girl who just wants her werewolf power back. Right. And we've seen like a little bit about, you know, past relationships. Like she's, she's not had a good, she doesn't have a lot of friends. She doesn't have any friends. Right. Uh, she doesn't have a good relationship with her ex, and uh, she doesn't seem very happy with herself. So there is room for a really great story. I think this issue, one, needed to be fleshed out more. Yes. Yeah. Because there was a lot of really good concepts, but it seemed like they rushed through it. Right. And they broke it up. It's broken up into chapters. And I didn't get that. And I didn't understand that either. And it kind of very quickly jumps from one scene to another. Where I'm like, wait, what? Hold on. And that's what I think was very confusing to me. Is they kind of threw a lot at you up front. And they didn't really... Like you said, it wasn't fleshed out very yeah. well. Where you kind of feel like there's a lot else that they could have told us. Mm -hmm. Because most... had Like half this issue, I was like, wait, okay. Who is this? What... Wh someone explain this world mm -hmm. a little bit more. Like, why are we here? Who are these people? Yeah. You know, it's very on the surface, and I'm hoping that, that they do. And I kind of, if it is going to take some more time, I hope this is going to be an ongoing for them. Yeah, and I trust Vault enough to know that, like, to believe yeah. that something great is coming. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian, as an editor, is Adrian Russell as, like, editor of the Vault world, uh, always, like, him and Damien always select really, really great books. Um, and they always have a really good plan for where they're going. Right. So I want to trust that this is also going to be there. This is definitely a book that I need to see where issue two goes. Because I think that, the like you said, like, the, the different chapters, they're very disjointed feeling. Yeah. And it's like, did they not have... Are they not planning it to be an ongoing, so they were trying to get as much out as possible? Did they feel like the chapters were going to be something that, you know, broke it up in a way that made it more enticing to readers? Yeah. I don't know, so I'm curious to see if that's how this continues to go. Because, again, I like the concept I like about this girl trying to be a werewolf and this mage who's trying to get his powers and he's, like, latched onto her and isn't very good with his powers yet. So you've got a girl who used to be at the top of her game that's fallen and is now in this novice category, essentially, with this guy. And right. I'm, I'm really curious to see what they do with it, but more so I'm curious to see how they do it. Yeah, and it 
it's one of those that it has enough things that's appealing to me. One, this cover is super cool. Mm -hmm. I love the pinks. Yes. Um, it does look really great. I'm also a werewolf fan. Yeah. So that's another thing. And I do like the characters that they have. Like, yes. I kind of like, you know, she's got a checkered past. But she's also a total badass. She is a badass. Yeah. Like, even without her werewolf powers, she was like, yeah. I'm just going to, like... I'm going to kill everybody in this room, and I'm just going to do it because they're pissing me off. Yeah, and that those are the types of characters I enjoy. I, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like this wine enough to where I think I could have multiple glasses, and I don't think I should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I should. Good, good to know. And yeah. I bought that yeah. cover. I You like that one, but I actually love this cover. Oh, cool. And it's, oh, it man, wraps cool around, too. yeah, it, it wraps around, like, it splits her face in half, but oh, it's shit. the same cover <clears throat> on both sides, but it's different sides of her face, and yeah. the cover is just, it's just badass. Yeah, and again, I think this is one that, that I'll definitely keep checking out, because like you, I mean, I'll, I'll blindly trust Vault. Like, to the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that by. Oh, yeah, that one goes on the wall. Um. <laughs> The Encoded... Matt's like, just put them all away while you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> the Encoded is back. This is from Devil's Stew Comics. This is volume two. Um, the Encoded came out last year, I think. Oh my gosh, it seems like forever ago. And it is... This is volume two from Devil's Stew. Um, this is... It takes place in Chicago in the future. Uh, and actually, I think every book at the time was coming out was coming out from Chicago. And uh, this is in a world where we've completely overtaxed everything. Everything is technology based, and they get to the point where they're now having blackouts of technology. Mm. And like in Volume One, we saw a guy who you know he had the way he walked was the prosthetic legs were electronic and so he had these and when the blackouts happen like he can't even walk somebody has to carry him to where he needs to go um so they're that intense of blackouts and in this volume um even if you didn't read the last one it doesn't actually matter um it seems like the characters aren't really necessarily connected it's just kind of more stories about what's happening in that time period in chicago um, and this is the story of during the blackout, a man who lives on the, they're essentially like they're the Amish at this time period are also people without like the same, that level of technology. They're not called Amish anymore, but they're these people who basically have chosen not to have the modern tech and be completely wired in. And during this time period of one of the blackouts, the, one of the guys who lives there, his son was kidnapped. Oh, okay. And so now he's got a he's called in a friend to help find his son, and that friend has called in this uh, AI uh, warrior, essentially like this. The this, guy on the cover. The guy on the cover who kind of oh. is a friend to people who aren't in the system, and he was he just kind of comes in and helps out. And these stories are oversized. Yeah, I saw the seven ninety nine price tag on the back. I was going to ask. You get like three issues worth of a comic like even I was trying I didn't even finish this issue I was reading it and reading it and reading it and I was like oh my god and then I was like oh I'm halfway I really thought I was almost done with this story I'm halfway because you do get the whole thing you're getting the entire story in like one issue okay so and we do actually have the volume one um, if you're curious, if you like the idea of this story, we do have the volume one, so you can go back and look at, at that story. And it's also seven ninety nine, and it's actually thicker than this one. Really? Yeah, it was a bigger book than this one is, but oh. it's they're such cool stories. I highly recommend. Uh, again, for those sci-fi, like futuristic sci-fi fans, like this is one of those books that you definitely need to pick up. Yeah, I don't know anything about Devil's Do comics, but I I kind of like this concept of. Hey, it's an oversized mm -hmm. issue, but it's it's a full story yeah. in this. Um, and I like this character on the front, so I'm kind of intrigued by this this warrior dude. Yes, he's great. He's I actually, uh, yeah, you would like him a lot, actually. Okay. I do. I am a sucker for sci-fi, so. Um, we're going to go to AWA Upshots, uh, n one of their newer titles. <coughs> uh, this is Knighted Issue 2. Uh, I sold out of Knighted Issue 1, so if you got really? Knighted Issue 1 and you were like, oh, I can't wait for more of this, you didn't tell me 
So all of my copies of Knighted Issue 2 are on the wall. Um, I think, like, there's, like, two people who told me they wanted to keep going, and those two people got the issue, but if you are not one of those two people, you've got to send me a message and let me know. Um, this is the story of a guy who works as, like, a crime analyst in the police department, and he is dating the daughter of the police chief. And in issue one, he tries to propose to her, and she's like, let me tell you why you're not good enough to marry me. Like, we're, it's, if you want to be in this relationship, like, that's fine, but we're, you're not marriage material yet, and here's why. And she gives him, like, this long list while he's proposing oh of, like, God. why he's not good enough. <laughs> so he leaves, and, like, when he leaves, he's, m like, jumped by these guys. They steal his ring. And then he, see, he, run, he sees the, like, he sees somebody, like, getting attacked or something, and he tries to stop it, like, or, like, walk by it and, like, ignore it or something, and he ends up pulling on a rope, and the rope is, like, the grappling hook line of the city's superhero, and he hmm. accidentally causes the death of the city's, like, Batman, and they, he ends up getting taken to, like, the suit knows what to do, and, like, the guy's car, and it's all, because it's all, like, tech oriented, and so he gets taken like kind of like the santa claus like honestly <laughs> and truthfully like it really read i every time that's all i think of it's like when tim allen knocks santa off the roof and suddenly the suits like you have to put it on and you have to go get in the car and you have to do it it's the same exact premise except with batman that is and a brilliant concept for it's a comic book brilliant <laughs> concept for a comic book and so he gets to this guy's house and the lucius fox character who literally looks just like they drew lucius fox into the book um is like well guess what now you're the now you're the knight you have to take over and he's like uh no that's not how this is gonna work and he's like <laughs> nope you have to and he's like you know and he tells him at the beginning of this one you know they say uh when if you know, two people can, three people can keep a secret because two of them are dead. Well, there's only one of us dead now, so looks like you gotta be in there on the secret or you gotta die. Wow. And he's like, oh, oh okay. Uh, and so he, like, is completely, like, against the idea until he actually, like, spends a day out as the night. And uh, it's much like My Bad, where it's a very comical look at the superhero. Like, he's learning that the their Batman is just a highly douche douche oriented dude yeah and he's doing it for all the like he puts the suit on in this one and he puts the helmet on and the the ai tech is talking to him and it's like oh x-ray vision engaged to only see through females clothing <laughs> and he's like what that's gross like no that's terrible i don't want that and they're like you don't want that? And he's like, no, I want the non-pervert like version of the tech. And she, they're like, non-pervy version of tech activated. And he's like, oh, my God, what is wrong with this guy? And so it's also like that. Like, he realizes, like, he wasn't actually fighting a lot of the bad guys. And he was kind of, like, a pervert and out for, like, what he could get. And so he's starting to see that the knight, who's everybody's hero, wasn't necessarily a good guy. Um, and Shit. he has gotten himself into a lot of trouble very quickly. Uh, great series. I definitely need to see if there's more of issue one because this is going to be another uh, great AWA. A talk about a publisher that very rarely steals you, steers you wrong. Um, this is a great one. And it is in the Resistance universe. Thank you. That was, I don't know that that was going to be your question, but they do say something about, um, oh, when the like great virus like have what do they call it in, oh my gosh i can never remember what they call it in the resistance universe but he does they do make reference to the virus that knocked out all the people in resistance okay so uh so they do make reference to the pandemic <coughs> so uh very curious to see how that will continue to play and kind of like erratic erratic made references to it but it never actually like focused in it i think right. this is going to be another one of those situations okay and you get mark to share art Great. Which is uh, something I'm on board for because I mean that cover alone looks really cool. Yes. Um, by the horns issue eight from Scout Comics is back. This is the other book that does all the flipping to go suddenly Ooh. the uh, the landscape way. I will continue to talk about this book and I believe I actually have <coughs> all eight issues uh, in stock right now. But this is the story of a girl who, um. Her husband was killed, she believes, by a unicorn. So she has become a unicorn slayer. And as she goes out on this mission to try to kill a bunch of unicorns, she finds out that the unicorns aren't necessarily the bad guys. And there are a lot of really, really bad people in this world. 
and uh, she is partnered with a bunch of supernatural, like, fairy tale kind of creatures to defeat the actual evil people now. And some of those she has teamed up with are unicorns. Um, it's a it's such beautiful color. Who's the colorist on the book before you go any further? The colorist. Do, do, do. Color girl. art. Andrea Tabakarua? Tabakaru? Well, beautiful. Um, these are some, the m one of the most vibrant books. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, every time I open it, it just looks like the happiest place to die. <laughs> and there's actually, that is actually referenced in here by one of the unicorns. The, one of the unicorns is like, I always knew I would die in a place this beautiful. And like, as it lays there thinking it's dying. But there is, uh, midway through in this book, it does flip to go where you're, you're looking at the book from a landscape perspective. And I just, I love when comic book creators play with the medium of the story. And the reason why is because she is there fighting on this ship that's in the clouds and the ship starts to fall out of the sky. And so, or she starts to fall off the ship, I think it is, actually. Her and the person she's battling are falling through the sky. So mm. the book switches to landscape, so you're falling with them. Um, and I just want to show that, because that lady looks super cool. She does. It's and like a Mortal Kombat character. Boom. Yeah. It all Dude, I'm missing through. all this cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you are. There's a lot of really cool pages I just skipped, man. I know. I just, just needed so you I to could show, show the off flippy page. The the flippy page. And there's like it keeps going on flippy pages for a while. Um It's super cool. It's a great way to show like falling through the sky. Like it's this book has been one, uh, we have a couple subscribers to it and it's one of those books that not a lot of people even know exist. And then when the people who are subscribed to it come in, they're like, did you read the newest <laughs> issue of By the Horns? And they have like stacks like this tall of other books. And yet that's the one that they're looking for somebody to talk to about because it's just such a fun story and it's so beautiful. And even when we were at the Scout store, we were talking about like, what are books that you can give to somebody like teen and up that are just like fun uh, adventure stories that have a lot of heart and are beautiful to look at. And I was like, by the horns. <laughs> like, that's the book I would give to somebody like that. If somebody came in and said, oh, I really like playing video games um, that are like, you know, War of the... Uh, I don't know what that... Can, war, war games. What is it called? World, World of Warcraft. Warcraft. Thank you. Um, or Dungeons and Dragons. Or I like fantasy stuff. Or I don't like fantasy stuff even. Like, I like to just kill all the unicorns. <laughs> like, anything like at all. Um... It, it's it's such a great book for that. And if you came in and said, I want a book about a badass female warrior, uh, this would be on the list of books because she is, she's smart, she's magical, and she's a badass. And it's just, it's such a great book. And uh, I, I kind of want them to make some kind of game or movie That'd that cool. has her in it because she's super cool. They could do that. I feel like at some point Scout is going to reach that Absolutely. where they maybe dip into animation or, or something like that. Um, Wolven Heart issue nine is out. This is from Mad Cave. I totally meant to bring that trade and I didn't. Um, this is one of those like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of stories where we've got um, a society of people, and in volume one, we are following along. Uh, Van Helsing runs this society that's supposed to stop bad things from happening in the world, and he is fighting against Elizabeth Bathory and Dorian Gray. Nice. And we find out at, at the end of volume one, which we do, I believe, still have a copy of the trade of, the end of volume one, um, we end up in an alternate dimension. And now Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory and, and Tesla is also in there. Elizabeth Bathory and Tesla are now running the organization and Van Helsing is the bad guy. Okay. I'm 100% in on this <laughs> book. I, I, so I actually found out, did not know anything about Wolf and Heart, and Mad Cave did a competition to find a new writer for it. And cool. you had to submit a bunch of pages for it, and I had an alarm set and everything to remember to do it and still forgot to enter this competition. And I was like, well, what is Wolf and Heart? Like, do I even want to write that? And I looked it up, and it was like, in a world where Van Helsing is fighting against Elizabeth Bathory. I was like, no, I want this. You're like, like um, yeah, I should have done this. I was like, I should have done this. Yeah. I, that would have been, I would have loved to write a story where we went from Elizabeth Bathory being the bad guy to being the good guy. And she is 
like a dr- she is a Dracula type character in this series. Like she's okay. fighting Van Hel- she is fighting somebody not Van Helsing. She's fighting somebody in this issue, and she literally turns into like the old classic vampire where you got the big wings. You almost look like a gar like Goliath from Gargoyles mm-hmm. kind of vampire. Like she turns into that, and I'm like, ah, oh, this would have been my book. <laughs> would have nailed it. Um such a fun story i read the entire trade uh because i bought i literally ordered the trade just because i wanted to know what it was so i could potentially enter this competition Mm -hmm. i read the entire thing in one bike ride i was like wow i love this i love everything about this it's kind of cheap it's mad cave so it's a little cheesy at times but i am still 100 percent and i love the new the the main character i think his name is sterling and uh, the story in issue one is, like, super beautiful because he's made... He's constantly going through time to, you know, stop all of these, like, battles coming up and with mythological creatures and things like that. And uh, you see, at the same time, uh, he's got, a, a like, a best friend who has a young girl that she's taking care of. And they're constantly just waiting on him to come back. And, like, the battle that goes through time and okay. the aging of them while he's out doing these battles is yeah. just a beautiful freaking story. I like this Tesla on the back. Very Thanos-esque. Yeah. With his electric gauntlet. I don't trust Tesla ever again after reading this book. Um, I stopped trusting Tesla after that that magic movie with Christian Bale. <laughs> the Prestige? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's what I think of every time, too. Uh, Frontiersman issue three from Image Comics. This is, um, what if Nick Offerman was a retired superhero who only cared about saving the environment and a bunch of, like, Gen Z like college students came in and asked him to join in on their campaign and now he's camped out in a tree but there are still bad like all the bad guys and all the good guys who have been looking for him forever and haven't been able to find him are now all coming back to have conversations with him and attack him and try to manipulate him to be on their side because he's stuck in this tree to stop and you know big corporations from tearing it down right so uh this is great. Honestly and truthfully, when they make this into a show or a movie, they're going to probably cast Nick Offerman, so you should just be prepared for this moment. Uh, and he's got, like, the daughter that doesn't want to talk to him anymore, and then she's like, gets worried because stuff starts happening, and uh, you've got the, the kids who recruited him that are just, like, college students, and they're like, we thought this was a really great idea, and now they're stuck in the middle of uh, some major, like, super villain, villainry coming after them. Uh, really, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun, and I didn't know that it would be when it came in. I was like, uh, why did I order this? This looks weird. And then somebody read it and asked me if I had read it, and I was like, no, I missed, like, issue one. Like, I didn't do a live stream that week, so I never read it, and they were like, go back and read it and tell me what you think. And I was like, oh, I was wrong. I'm glad I went back to read this because it is actually a really a fun story uh, that's pulling more and more heart into it. And I am all about like those, you know, age superheroes who you don't, you know, maybe shouldn't still be superheroes who get right. drawn back into the battle uh, because they're trying to do the right thing that they don't feel like they ever accomplished in the past. Yeah, and I, I've always been a fan of that. This was one that I missed because there wasn't a live stream and I now feel like looking at this art alone I messed up. Also this cool fucking wrap around cover. cover. Yeah, this art is spectacular. Yeah. So this is this is probably one that I'll definitely get in trade. So I can read this. Yeah, and that's a good point to remember is that Image is not doing second prints. So yes. if you're interested in an image book these days, make sure you're grabbing it on the shelves while they're coming out. And I have two more image books that you're not going to want to miss. So that's a good, good segue. Uh, the Silver Coin is in its volume two. This is issue seven. And Ram V wrote this issue. No one reads Ram V. <laughs> no one likes Ram V. I, I feel like if Chad's still in the comments, he's ready. He's ready for this moment. Um, Ram V has been heating up on different radars. He's, you know, he did many deaths with Layla Star. He's writing Swamp Thing. He's, uh, he just finished his Catwoman. His Catwoman run is about to end, right. actually. Um, and it's switching to Teeny Howard, which I'm very excited to see what Teeny Howard does with the character. Um, with still Jenny Frizen variants. But 
Uh, if you haven't ever read Silver Coin, it's okay. You can start here because Silver Coin is an anthology. It's all about uh, a coin that m kind of serves as a monkey's paw for people uh, who haven't necessarily like encountered this Silver Coin before. And we've seen all kinds of crazy things from like a summer camp, you know slasher movie to like a rock star who got famous to mm -hmm. uh now a guy who just really wants to make his break and win all of the money in las vegas and this one parallels uh the like aztec form of sacrifice to the sacrifices what you give up and what you're trying to accomplish when you get into gambling addiction and how far you're willing to go for that next big win before you even realize that you've made all you've sacrificed everything along the way right um so pretty cool and all of the silver coin books have michael wash on uh art and it is actually michael wash's that you can't show that page. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's michael wash's idea and then he's hired he's getting all of the writers that he'd love to have they each do an issue the next one is actually matthew rosenberg Really? Mm -hmm. I do think it's cool that um, they're doing a lot of these horror anthology books. Yeah. And I, I think it's cool that you're giving all these writers a chance to kind of step away from their all their books to just write one issue. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very great. I think if you're definitely a fan of the horror anthology stuff that's been coming out, yeah. this is another good one to have. And he's had, you know... Um, Chip Zdarsky's done one. Kelly Thompson's done one. Uh, like I said, this is Ram V. Next is Matthew Rosenberg. Um, there's been so many incredible, like, every time that a new artist or a new writer is announced for it, I'm like, whoa, yeah. that's going to be, th that's going to be the one. So, uh, they're, they're always, you're always getting new, exciting stories with it. So, uh, I guess speaking of Matthew Rosenberg. Yes. What's the furthest place from here? Um, I don't know. There's lots of places that are pretty far away. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, this is number two. This is issue two from Image Comics. Uh, this is Tyler Boss and Matthew Rosenberg working together again. Um, you may know them working together from Four Kids. Uh, walking to a Bank? Four yes. Kids in, okay. I was like, is that the full title? Yes. Um, yeah. This is, it's an apocalyptic world, and we're following these kids. Something happens. You're not allowed to ever age up to be an adult. Correct. We still don't know what that means mm -hmm. necessarily but you cannot be an adult in this world and it is illegal to have an adult in your presence and all of these teenagers have split into warrior style gangs yes yeah. and <laughs> they are they're called families but let's be honest they're just the warriors yeah and they're all split up into these different gangs and you don't go into other people's turfs and uh in issue one, we are, we find out that our main characters are the kids who live in the record store. And um, one of them gets... Uh, she wanders off yeah. at night, which you're not allowed to do. And they have been trying to find her. And um, it is leading their group further and further into danger every issue. And leading us to learn more and more about the world every time. Yeah, and this is one of those where I love the world that they're in. Um, I'll, also, I'll just admit I'm a huge fan of The Warriors. That's such a classic movie. Um, and one of the things that I've always loved about The Warriors is that each of those gangs had, like, very different mm -hmm. styles, and they kind of had this, like, running theme. You know, like, the roller skating yeah. guys, and, like, that. I always dreamed of being in a gang of roller skaters. It's funny, because <laughs> you say the roller skater guys, and because of my brain, I automatically go to the creepy dudes on roller skates, like, on their hands and legs in Return to Oz. Oh, and yeah. And I'm like, no, those guys are not cool, Phil. You don't want to no. be a part of them. No, I want to wear, like, coveralls. And yeah. 70 skates <laughs> and Fair. skate around subway stations bothering other gang members. I do, <laughs> and there's a lot of really cool, like, gangs. Like, I like the bankers, mm -hmm. you know, with the kind of pig masks that they wear and the suits. Uh, you have your boys in blue. But the best ones in here are the supermarket kids. I was just going to say, the supermarket ones they introduced this time uh, yes. were are my new favorites, the Davids. Yes, the Davids. The Davids. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm David. Thank and you. I loved how they lettered that, where it was like, I, it's him saying I'm, but then... But then it's just the badge underneath that badge. says David, so it doesn't actually... He doesn't ever actually say David. It just yeah. shows the name badge. Um, we talked about with Lunar Room, the chapter breaks didn't work. This is a book where it does. Yes. Yeah. It 100% works that they have different chapter breaks and i love that the titles, titles. are just a line <laughs> from that chapter yeah and yeah. it feels like you're watching an 80s movie when you read 100 percent. and the art i mean tyler boss is slowly becoming one of my favorites mm -hmm. um and it fits so perfectly and this is one of those books too where there's a lot of really great characters yes. in here like you're, and I'm kind of hope that slowly over time we kind of explore some of them. You know, you have your leader, you kind of have the second in command, mm -hmm. and then you have all the quirky other ones that kind of just fall in line. Um, and they even add um, the kid that was in the bankers group, but he was kind of like the outcast of mm -hmm. that group, so he kind of just like stumbles upon along with them here. And he's kind of, you know, the young, mm -hmm. kind of yeah, annoying just, little like, brother invited type. invited himself to join their family. He's like, but I'm in your family now. Yeah. And they're like, no, you're not. And he's like, but I am now. I'm actually curious, character-wise, because Matthew Rosenberg and Tyler Boss are two writers who never do something without intent. Right. And the big character that we're seeing a lot of, the second-in-command kind of character we're seeing a lot of this time, is Proof Rock. Proof Rock, yeah. And so I want to know... Where the loves, you know, the love song of J. Alfred Proof Rock story is going to really come into play with this character yeah. because they are both very intentional in every choice they make in a comic book, and so the naming of these characters is going to play a big role. Yes, and I do enjoy that because it's something that you kind of pay attention to, and you're putting all these very like there's just small details throughout that you just want to put in the back mm -hmm. of your head. Um, and it is one of those two that you kind of have to research a little bit because you're like, oh, I need to, you know, this is maybe something that I don't know, yeah. but it exists in the world and ties into the book, mm -hmm. which is really cool. It also excites me for when the, the records come out, Yes, you know, and we can have these songs Someday. tied to them. <laughs> um, Someday. Someday we'll get those records. Someday. Yeah. The, 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 the what's the furthest place from here deluxe edition comes with a vinyl. There was major allocation issues. I was told we're supposed to blame Adele uh, because she majorly printed her album at a time when there's a record shortage is what all of the record people have been telling me. Uh, so, sure. But um, it is it is a thing. Uh, Matthew Rosenberg actually did an entire thread on his Twitter if you're curious about the history of them trying to get this book out and all the things that went down with it, including the story of the vinyls. But they did, they, it was an open order item that suddenly became extremely allocated down to the fact that we are only supposed to be getting one and then that one keeps getting pushed back. Yeah. So who knows when this will be coming out, but there is all new songs from bands on these deluxe finals and uh, there may or may not be second prints that do include the deluxe version. They were told to tell everybody, yes, the first print was allocated but don't worry you can get it on a second print is literally what they came out and said and then the next morning image announced that there would be no second prints anymore so matthew rosenberg is completely stressed out about it so send him all the love on the internet because he needs it um and also if worse comes to worse just put those songs out on the internet yeah and they probably will you know as much as i would love to have a vinyl record of a new jawbreaker song i also just, just want to hear. hear the new John Breaker song. Yeah. That is What's the Furthest Place From Here, and that was issue two. Yes. Um, Ram says he has the Warriors Director's Cut on DVD. Ooh. Um, okay. So that I guess... I don't think I've seen the Director's Cut. I haven't seen the Director's Cut. cut. Mm -mm. Interesting. I think I've always just watched the theatrical. Now, I'm intrigued, though. I kind of need to see that. Yeah. So, that said, um, I guess the question is, I was originally, we talked about possibly talking about albums that everybody loves. We kind of talked about that with issue one. Mm -hmm. But this led us into this whole rabbit hole of weird 80s movies. Yeah. So, what is, I guess, if you're watching this still at home, what is your favorite uh, weird, crazy, off-the-wall 80s movie? Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's a tough one. Dude, I know that Return the Oz scared the crap out of me when I was a child. 
I probably haven't seen that since I was a child. Dude, and she, that lady takes her, she takes her into the room and she takes her face off and then she has all those faces. Like, Game of Thrones thinks they did that cool, but they did not have nothing on uh, <laughs> Return <laughs> Return to Oz. Um, just real quick, one more book to talk about. Uh, Tales of Mother F. Goose. This is Frank Thierry doing a one-shock for Aftershock. This is obviously a Scarface homage cover. Um, I like that his tagline was, we, we will make you a promise this book will ruin your childhood. <laughs> it didn't, but, um, you know, good try. I also like here, so it says, Welcome to Mother F. Goose, where your favorite fairy tales are turned into twisted characters right of a, out of a Tarantino movie. It's, it's not a bad description. That's really kind mm. of what it is. It is... Um, We've got uh, Jack Horner working with Little Miss Muffet, their detective team. Scarface cover. And they are trying to figure out who, um, oh my god, I already forgot who they killed. One of the people was killed, and so they've taken in um, a bunch of would-be assassins, like Puss in Boots is one of them. The three blind mice. The three blind mice <laughs> definitely come up in the story. Um <laughs> And you and they keep doing it, and what's cool is it does kind of read like a Tarantino film. Like they're at this, they've already taken these people in, and now they've got them, and they're like, "Well, I'm going to torture them for answers." And she's like, "Well, who is this guy anyway?" And then it jumps back to like, "Well, you may not know, but this guy is this." And then you're all of a sudden in that guy's story. Oh, okay. And so that's that's kind of why they go with the like Tarantino reference because it does kind of feel like that. And then they come back to the room, and she's like, "Okay, but that doesn't mean that doesn't explain to me why you chose this guy." Um, and so there's all kinds of random references to different, like, like the three little pigs are in there and the story for the three little pigs is their casino owners. Mm -hmm. And you talk about like, you know, the big bad wolf essentially trying to like go in there, but his name is, is Lupo. He's not actually called the big bad wolf. And oh, okay. so he's not a wolf. And he's not a wolf. None of them are actually he's like the Wolverine. animals. I was none, looking for him like what? No, none of them are animals. They're like like Puss in Boots is just like a guy and they just call him Boots. They don't actually call him Puss in Boots. He's just mm. uh this he's like the the guy that, you know, goes in and like oh, kills wait, the people. What? Yeah, they're not actually the animals. So I don't actually get a goose? You do not actually get a I'm goose. Out. That is is in a suit. That's not the case. If you want to see a goose start a start a war, read uh, Animal Castle. Yes. Actually, don't ask me to give you Animal Castle. I don't have it. Um, but this is there. It is more just mobsters with the names of hmm. the fairy tale characters. Hmm. So it's yeah, it's not. I was a little less excited because I thought it was gonna actually be like the fairy tale. I thought it was gonna be more like the. The fables yeah. and the telltale games, based off of the same thing, where we were gonna get actual like <laughs> mythical char fa fairy tale characters. What are you? He's a duck on the cover. He's a duck on the cover, but he's not in the story. Oh. I know. Yeah, because I, I was sitting here and I was flipping through these pages as I was picking ones to show, and I was like, wait, where, where are they? Where the, where are the animals? No, they're not anthropomorphic characters at all. It's a real shame. Frank Thierry failed me. I would tweet him that because he's Frank Thierry and he would not care. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they're just mobsters with the names of fairy tale characters. It's not a fable style book. It does still read really fun. Um, if you like fairy tales and you'll get all the jokes, you would probably really enjoy it. It is something that Tarantino would do where he would name all of his characters after fairy tales and then put in a bunch of random jokes like about different things like that only people who know all the fairy tales would get. And so it's just, like, one-liners that somehow suddenly become, like, great, like, fairy tale reference. Or, what are nursery rhymes? They're not even fairy tales. Yeah, they're nursery, they're rhymes. nursery rhymes. Getting it all wrong. Getting so it all wrong. This is a one-shot? Are we going to see more of this? Who knows? It says it's a one-shot. I don't know if we'll ever see more. it Tales of Mother F. Goose. Well, and we saw, we see three stories inside of one frame tale. So mm. that could be it. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then, lastly, we are actually going to have a special show to talk about this book, so we're not going to talk about it right now, so I just wanted okay. to show you the covers really fast, but the uh, Marvel Voices Community Dads uh, finally came out this week. Community Dads, I obviously said that wrong. Um, and this is the uh, Latin X uh, celebration. Uh, it was supposed to come out during Hispanic Heritage Month. And Marvel had a lot of delays with it, so it is finally out now. 
And on uh, Wednesday, we will be having, uh, I will have a special guest, and Phil, you'll be here, so if you want to be part of it, uh, I'll have a special Ooh. guest uh, from Chongo uh, ATX. Oh, nice. Juan, Juan Winces will be here to talk about um, what Marvel did with this and all of the impact that it has had on the community already and all of the writers and creators um, and artists who are a part of it and uh, how great it was to see all of these people come together. Okay. So look for that on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Very excited. Okay. Yeah. I just I also like really covers. love all those covers. Yeah. yeah. I was like, ooh, these covers are really nice. Yes. Okay. So look for that on Wednesday night. Uh, like I said earlier, we're not going to do a trivia question right now. We're going to skip straight to our picks of the week, and we are going to do one big trivia question at the end of the night that gets you a prize. So if there was anything in the hot new titles that you want to add to your pool list or you want to make sure it's in your box, give us a shout. And keep answering uh, our fun questions. We talked about what are your favorite weird off-the-wall 80s movies. Chad said Prehysteria, which is kids finding dinosaur eggs that hatch out tiny little dinosaurs who they name after Elvis, Paula Abdul, Mick Jagger, MC Hammer, and Madonna. So What? Yeah, Prehysteria. Look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got a short stack. Ooh, Guillermo says Blues Brothers. Um, mm. We've got a short stack of picks of the week this week. Um, the first one up is A Thing Called Truth. This is issue two. Um, this is from the creative team who did um, Alice in Leatherland, so it's probably always going to be a pick of the week for me because I like that they, like we talked about with Laura, do these in real life stories. Yeah. And this is issue two. Um, from Image, it is it's all about a doctor who was working on this great, amazing research, and the you know people in charge of her company stole her research and kicked her out and tried to paint her out as a crazy person. So she went out and got drunk and took a nap in her car so she didn't drive home. And the next morning, woke up with a, another person driving her car yeah. across Europe. Mm -hmm. And she's not really sure what's going on. Issue two opens up, and we are seeing the story of the person driving the car. Right. And the crazy thing is, is I, I think I remember saying on the live stream, by the end of issue one, I was like, I don't know if I'm on board because we've seen this story before. And... I think it's just going to kind of follow, you know, into this like conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. big pharma type stuff. That's not, not it. Wow, mm -mm. That is not it. And by the end of this issue, I was like, wow, I really want to keep reading this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like this story because the, the second character that they introduce has a very sad backstory. Very sad backstory. Extremely sad backstory. Um, she loses her brother to a condition that runs in her family. And she's basically told by a doctor, like, hey, we think it's a high probability that you also mm -hmm. have this illness and we need to get you tested. And while she's going through her brother's thing, she discovers this list um, or a journal mm -hmm. of uh, his, the, his favorite s movie scenes and all the places that they are located and that he wanted to go and reenact all the scenes in these movies at those places, regardless of how embarrassing or stupid or mm -hmm. dangerous it could be. And she's like, fuck it. That's what I'm going to do. If I might die, I might as well do, do this. I have absolutely no money. No money. <laughs> no money whatsoever. Doesn't even have a car. <laughs> never had a driver's <laughs> license. So she steals the car that has a person sleeping inside yeah. of it. And is like, all right, here we go. Yep. We're on an adventure. And the doctor is the person that was sleeping inside the car. Mm -hmm. So we've now connected the two stories. And I love that the doctor is like, I'm not... I'm not in. I'm not the kind of person who does fun, adventurous things. And yeah. she's like, "Well, then you don't have to go. I'll give you your car back. I'm getting on this train. Do what you got to do. I'm doing it." And she's like, "Well, why are you doing this?" And she's like, "No, I'm not going to answer that." And yeah. She's like, "Well, that's just I have to do it." That makes this very. And she's like, "Well, can you at least tell me who the person was?" And she's like, "Nope." She goes, "What if we make a deal?" Like, and then she's like, "Well, what do you do? What kind of doctor are you? I don't know what you are. You're not answering questions about yeah. you." And she's like, "Well, what if we make a deal where we don't ask any questions about the past and we just go on this adventure?" Which I also like, I where it's it. like, hey, we're not going to dive into it. Maybe at some point we decide to, yeah. but for right now, let's just move forward and go on this crazy adventure, and everything that happened beforehand, we don't really need to talk about. Right, and I mean, if it doesn't someday circle around to where the doctor's research is exactly what will cure this girl, I will be surprised. 
I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need that to kind of be the thing that yeah. happens in the end. Like, but also because it is this team, I could also see that. Like, uh, let me just preface this: Alice in Leatherland is the most wonderful romantic comedy, and like the I need it to be all. I just want to read it all the time because it's so happy. So I could see them making this work out perfectly in the end because that wraps up so perfectly right. in the end. But at the same time, because of their writing style, I could believe that they would also not give us that ending. Yeah. And so my brain is like, I want to hope for this perfect happy moment. But my heart is like, but I don't want to get too, like, excited about that. I just want to enjoy the journey along the way and yes. not worry about if there's going to be a happy ending. Like, this is one of those where I don't need to know how it ends. Mm-hmm. I just need to know, I just need to go to all of the stops along the way and absolutely enjoy the journey, which is the whole, like, point of the book is teaching both of these characters to al- enjoy the journey of life along the way. Yeah. And I love that we are also going to get that as we go through this book. It's so heartfelt. And uh, Yolanda is is absolutely incredibly strong at doing that as a writer. Yeah. And it's, it's great, too, because these two characters are the polar opposites. And they're going to work so well together. Mm-hmm. Is that, like, buddy road trip story? I, this, surprisingly, by the end of this issue, I was like, okay... This is one of those books that, I, yeah, it would be in my pick of the week as well. And it's crazy because after issue one, I was like, no, right. I, I, I don't think I'm interested. And I put it in issue, in the picks of the week without even asking you. And I was like, Phil's going to be like, you have to talk about this. Because I didn't know if you got to it. And I knew that you didn't like issue one at the end of it. And, like, you weren't sold on issue yeah. one. And I was like, no, but trust me. Yeah. Because, like, the this team... Like, Alice in Leatherland, I wasn't sure after issue one, and now I will, like, sing those the praises of that book until mm-hmm. I die. And now I'm like, no, just wait. Just you wait. And then you, like, I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. And to hear you say that you love it now, I'm like, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of things, I don't know where they're going to go. <laughs> the Crimson Cage, number one. AWA Upshot. Uh, this was a book I was excited about. I'm a huge fan of wrestling. Uh, I'm also a really big fan of like local wrestling. Mm-hmm. I used to go to a lot of local events here. And there's something magical about local wrestling. And it's interesting to see it because <sighs> you don't... like The stories are really great. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's kind of like independent comics where they can really do yeah. whatever they want and they're not tied to like the corporate entity that like WWE is tied to. And so it it's it was great to read this book and see a lot of like characters that I've seen in local shows. Um so you have uh Chuck Frenzy mm-hmm. who is the top man, he's the champion at uh, Louisiana Pro Wrestling. And he and his wife, Charlene, Charlene, who is his, his, um, kind of like, I forget what they're called. She's like the ringside babe. Yeah. Like she's just there to like, she's there to be like, Oh, like he's good. He's so great. And then she gets, you know, the one that they drag them in by their hair later Mm -hmm, on, or like they punch them, which you see in this, like you see the guy like punch her off the ropes. And I love then you get to see the backstory where (laughs) he like thinks he hit her too hard. I pushed her too hard. Like, Oh my God, (laughs) she looked like she was really hurt. Like I love it. Um, Cause there's no doubt that wrestling is fake in this story. Oh yeah. It's 100% fake. Um, but then the, uh, the main guy, uh, Chuck Frenzy and his, his friend, who's also the guy he wrestles, um, they meet up at a bar one night, they get drunk and they wander into the swamps of Louisiana and they're approached. They meet the fates. Yes. And basically they're like, Hey, sometimes you kind of have to, uh, sometimes the world's not always going to work in your mm-hmm. favor. Sometimes you kind of have to do something bad. And they're basically like, you're going to be a great champion one day, but you have to do something to kind of make that happen. And essentially it's to kill another wrestler. And once you become champion, you will only be champion one time. Yes. But you'll receive all the wealth and fame that you are looking for. It's just only going to happen for a short period of time. And, of course, he struggles with it. Right. He's like, I'm not a bad person. I don't want to do these things. And his wife, of course, is 
very much like you have <laughs> do to do it. You have to do it. You, you have, have to. to. And I guess to back this up a little bit, this is literally what if Shakespeare was in wrestling. So it is it is going to take that that is the whole point is to put all of the Shakespearean stories and all the Shakespearean elements into a story about semi pro wrestling. <laughs> Like, Kentucky. uh, not huh? no, that was Beowulf. That's not Shakespeare. Um, but same idea. Kind of the same idea yeah. where they put Grindle, yeah, Grindle, Kentucky from a WF shop put Beowulf in mm-hmm. uh, a '70s weed farm store and biker gang. Great story. book, by the way. Uh, this is this is Shakespearean kind of in in pro wrestling, and you do you get the fates, and then you get the Lady Macbeth going. No, you have to do yeah. it. You have to do it. Yeah, and uh. I actually literally was waiting for them to like kill somebody and yell out damn spot like because yeah. it got so Shakespearean <laughs> yeah. feeling at some point yeah um but it's it's such an interesting concept and if you are a fan of pro wrestling or if, like I actually grew up um my dad my mom and my dad were divorced and my dad and my brother and I that's what we did like every time we were at my dad's is he would go get a bunch of pizzas and we'd have pizza like we'd have what he called pajama jammy jams and everybody like we'd put on our pajamas and so would like his best friend's kids and we'd all sit there and eat all of these pizzas and just watch wrestling so like I grew up on all of the wrestling stuff and uh, like you said the stories were always the fascinating part and like oh what's gonna happen and you get to see that in this like they they work out the intricacies of what their plot is gonna be and this rick flair motherfucker who comes in is like messes up the whole thing and he just he even has like the bathrobe on at one point i was like this guy is literally just supposed to be like rick flair he's got the big blonde like floofy hair and wears a bathrobe and yeah his I name's was, vlad diamond i think yeah it's something no emerald. no emerald vlad emerald vlad emerald yeah um and yeah it and the dialogue too is very much like old school wrestling mm-hmm. um because yeah kind of like you so when i growing up i all of the like i would mow the lawn each time there was a pay-per-view event and i even had like the oversized plushy wrestlers that you could like <laughs> wrestle with as a kid it's so, like i'm watching the pay-per-view and jumping off my couch and i love the stories like i used to love the old undertaker stories with like kane and his brother chad just said undertaker is greater than everyone else which is funny to me if y'all don't know the undertaker lives in austin i've also met him several times i have met him several times he is that nice that man does not carry out his own packages no. uh he would buy like power <laughs> wheels or stuff for his kids from toys r us yeah. and then ask for a carry out nice. and i'm like that's got to be in your contract that you can't lift things because yeah. there's no way you can't ca- i can i'm literally carrying out a package for the undertaker yeah i'm like five foot nothing and small and he's this massive dude and i'm like why am i taking this out to your car. Yeah. I was like, it's got to be in his contract. Uh, but yeah, he used to shop at my Toys R Us all the time nice. uh, for his kids. He's very, very nice. Oh yeah, like it's crazy too because you like I I used to see him in H E B. That was where I saw him because he lives he lived in the same part of Austin that I I grew up in, and I would always see him. And I would just be so intimidated to walk up to him, you know, because he just portrayed this, like, big evil dude. And, he's and then you walk up to him, and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, how's it going, you know? Yeah, you want to take a picture? Let's do it, you know, whatever you want. And it's just like, dude, you're so nice. Why are you this nice? Yeah. And then I'm like, but can you tombstone me? Like, in the <laughs> produce aisle. I'm like, tombstone me. She hands you a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that that brings me to the question for this is who is your favorite wrestler? Ooh. Yeah, like um mine was always Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh, good choice. Because he had the pink and black leotard with like mm-hmm. the skull with the heart around it. And he had those crazy pink glasses. He was just yes. so cool. Him and Shawn Michaels. I was going to say Shawn yeah. Michaels. Oh, Him my God. Shawn yes. Shawn Michaels, like the Shawn Michaels dancing whenever he wins. Oh, yes. Yeah. I loved Shawn Michaels as a kid. And then, no surprise, as an adult, I was super into the Hardy Boys. Uh, Jeff totally Hardy. <laughs> Jeff Hardy was. They were like industrial fans, right. with the like green streaks. I was. I was at Universal uh, Studios, and back when like Universal Studios Florida, like Orlando, they would have you know once they got the red of the Nickelodeon Studios, they just used the studio space for like random things. Mm-hmm. And we were there one time, and we were walking by, and there was a sign that said uh, that they were filming the wrestling stuff. Oh my god! And gosh. I like looked it up, and I was like, guys. The Hardy, 
they're they're there. The, yeah. Hard, the Hardys are there. I Jeff Hardy is in this room, and my friends are like, "Why are you so excited about this?" And I was like, "I need to go." <laughs> and like, but Ashley is like, "She might like." She she might just randomly kidnap a human today, guys. Yeah. And I was like, I just I just really like the Hardy Brothers. Like they're so cool. Yeah. Um, Good times. Yeah, you never watched wrestling. No, that's a shame. Yeah, it's, Gu- it's poetic. Guillermo said The Rock or The Undertaker, and Ram says Stone Cold or The Rock. Ooh, I always forget Stone that The Rock was a wrestler. Yeah, but Stone Cold Stone was the Cold. man with the smashing the beers. Oh, the Stone Cold Stunner. That was one of my favorite moves. I had, There was a kid in the neighborhood that was really good at it. And so he was the only kid I ever would actually let pull wrestling moves on me. And we just do it on his trampoline, but he was so good. He made it look great. I love Stone Cold. And, of course, Ric Flair. I think Ric Flair was another one. I can't with Ric Flair because I've been at too many comic conventions in my adult life that I no longer can handle Ric Flair because if he's at a con, all you hear all day is, Woo! And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't. (laughs) Stop it. It's too much. It's just all day long. So when you're running a table at a con for a weekend, all you hear all day is, Woo! And you're like, okay, Ric Flair, go. Go. Of course. Go home. Um, If I walked up to the table, I'd be like, hey, one time just the once. only time I would like I used to get in fights all the time with my older brother he's four years older than me and the only way I would ever win fights is I would do the scorpion death lock on oh him oh my gosh and I was like <laughs> ah winner like and this is like an actual fighting but I like yeah. learned how to do it so that I could beat my brother up uh, when he was like get out of fighting with my brother is like that's how I'd win I'm like tap out <laughs> tap out <laughs> <laughs> so there you go <laughs> wrestling yeah. it's a thing it's a um, wonderful thing it's a great thing uh i'm actually i very rarely have enough issues to bring this out to remind people that crossover is one of my picks all the time uh one of my favorite donny cates titles that's still ongoing donny cates jeff shaw um this is number 10 such a punish yeah issue 10 from image uh you i feel like crossover is really the biggest flex from Deacona. The colors in Crossover have just been so strong. And while everybody is on their A game in this book, D has just been killing it with the coloring on this book. Um, So much. I was actually like, I remember we did when we did our Eisner show. I was like, I don't know why D's not nominated, right? Like, I remember that. for coloring, and so I'm I'm hoping maybe this year. This year yeah. we'll see D get a nomination. Um, crossover, and honestly, everybody. John J. Hill with the lettering, the graphic design has been really killing it on this book. It's such an interesting thing. Uh, this book, we've been seeing a lot from the Powers team in Crossover recently, and you know those are Brian Michael Bendis characters, and uh, there's a segment of this book that has a guest writer. Oh. By way of Brian Michael Bendis. That's what? not a spoiler. It's on the cu- it's on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you are always on Twitter. <laughs> but is it, is it listed in the yeah. book? Oh, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's on the credits. Yeah, it's in the so, credits. Um, it's, it's like half the, like, it's like a chunk of the book. So it's, uh, you it, ca- you kinda we had this conversation uh, two weeks ago or uh, a month ago when we speculated when, it was going to happen. Uh, I didn't know for sure. Tommy tweeted it like a month ago and we talked about it anyway. Uh, so yeah, crossover. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it keeps going. It keeps getting more and more like into yeah. this world. We're trying to figure out who the person is that's killing all of these uh comic book creators and characters and things are getting more and more exciting as the story goes on and we know that this is going on for a while longer but who knows uh where it's gonna go yeah it's, it's a crazy story it, i i've definitely enjoyed it i mean you know it feels like it's a it's a it's a book for comic fans yes Um, Because you get a lot of really wonderful things, especially if you grew up with image titles, Mm -hmm. you know, or you've been reading image for a while. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is, it's just, it's been fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Great team all around, and they all deserve their credit for where this story is going. Yeah, most definitely. And lastly, from (laughs) Scout Comics... Uh, the pick of the week, Ranger Tree. The pick of the year for me. (laughs) I'm going to say it right now. This is my favorite comic. I'm not surprised. We literally stood in the Scout store and said, I can't wait for Phil to read this. This is Ranger Stranger. (laughs) This is the winter special from Scout Comics. 
Um, Ranger Stranger originally was a webcomic from Scout in their early days when a lot of their stuff was digital. And it is the story of a, a park ranger. It's a, a bunch of mini stories from a park ranger describing his daily adventures. <laughs> With a small child and a beaver. You almost can't show that. <laughs> There's so much. I thought about not showing it, but I was like, no, I'm going to show it. <laughs> you need to understand. The kind of book that Ranger Stranger really is. Yeah. Um, so imagine very much like you guys said it the best. It's like Adult Swim vignettes kind of going over just <laughs> I don't even really want to say the day in the life of this guy because it's really just him kind of sitting around spouting stupid bullshit yeah <laughs> it's, just it's like the deep thoughts from Saturday Night Live yes. if they were done by Adult Swim yes, yes. like if the Adult Swim animated deep thoughts from Saturday Night mm-hmm. Live in the 80s this is what you would get and it is magically wonderful I could not stop laughing the entire time I was reading this book. Uh, It's great. It's very great. And the character, like, his whole mannerisms and everything kind of remind me a little bit of, like, a character from Archer. Mm, A little bit with kind of, like, just how he looks and that creepy smile that he has throughout this entire book. (laughs) Um, But this is, it's a ton, a ton of fun. Um, and it's one of those where, you know, kind of like comic strips or even like Archie, uh, you don't have to sit down and read the entire book. You can, you know, pick it up, read a couple of these little vignettes and then, and then put it back down. Um, but no, I, I, I sat down and almost instantly just read the whole book in, in one sitting cause it just, it never slowed it, down. No. And there is a compilation of all of the stories that were digital um, in, like, a trade form Ooh. that Scout only sells through the Scout store. So I am going to be uh, getting some of those for the store because that's amazing. <coughs> Very excited about that. Um, and I hope that – I hope they have good enough sales on this winter special that they decide to bring more Ranger Stranger because this is another one of those books. I'm like, just give me more. Give me all of it. Um, I need the jacket too. I need oh the costume. God. Yes. With the hat and everything. For next year's indie comic Halloween, Small Press of Ween, yes. you, you can be Ranger Stranger, and that would be amazing. Um, they actually, at the Scout store, in order to use the bathroom, the rule is you have to high five this cardboard cutout of Ranger Stranger that's like on the wall. It's like, and in, in you go past it, and they're like, okay, but if you want to use the bathroom, you have to high five Ranger Stranger. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't be looking at this because I'm just remembering all these little stuff. And this one, he's asked to save uh, these two <laughs> skiers who have gotten lost and are stuck, and they're, he's using a drone <laughs> to get them, and he just runs it right into them. And he goes, oh, I guess nature got a hold of them. Nature got <laughs> another one. It's like it's a lost cause. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. There, it's... We, we like, could not wait for Phil to read this. We handed it to him the other day, and we were like, Phil, you have to read this right now. And he did, did this giggle the entire time, and we were so like, oh, great. it's wonderful. This is what we knew would happen. Oh, yeah. So, Ranger Stranger, pick of the week, or Phil's pick of the year. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um. Oh, my gosh. Pick it up from Scout Comics. Uh, like I said, this is the one-shot winter special, but hopefully we'll have the... Uh, compendiums of the and they're not expensive they're like fifteen dollars or something oh, like that's that. not like bad it's not at bad at all because it's a compilation of the web comics mm-hmm. you can also there is a website for the park that he is the ranger of you can get to the ranger stranger park website and it has like a live eagle nest cam and uh like cabin like information like from like the park ranger stuff there's so much additional content online for this character and it's fantastic <laughs> Congratulations! I'm staring at this guy. back cover. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm Good just lord! Like, oh my god! What's the back cover? I, <laughs> it's okay. not family friendly. <laughs> not that our show is family friendly, but it's not. It's not family friendly at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, then, so, Ranger Stranger, the greatest thing about it is that Matt and Nigel had no idea who Ranger Stranger was. They hadn't heard of him or anything when we were in the Scout store. And I was like, oh, well, there's a book coming out soon. Y'all hear about him soon. And then the girl from Scout was like, actually, it's right there. And so they picked it up and read it in the Scout store. And Nigel was like, I need you to subscribe me to anything <laughs> Ranger yeah. Stranger that ever comes out. Uh, this book goes in my box forever. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And uh, the second, I, I sent a snap when I was doing the Tuesday stuff and I was like look at what I got and I like sent a picture of me with Ranger Stranger and Nigel was like I want it right now and I was like it's in your box it's ready for tomorrow don't uh. worry alright so we've got some in stocks coming your way like I said we're doing a prize at the end of the night uh, keep uh, waiting for that because it's going to be some fun stuff um, so we're going to go through these a lot faster. We've got good the Good Asian Issue 7 in. Uh, one of my favorite things about this series, again, is that it does teach you a lot of history about being an Asian American uh, during the 1930s, but this is a crime noir story starring an Asian character yes. done by an Asian team. Uh, Two Moons. This is a Civil War story uh, about a guy who's seeing ghosts and uh, things. Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer. This is Old Lady Buffy, essentially. Uh, issue one. Issue one, yes. yeah. Inferno issue three. This is the Vega variant. It's beautiful. We're starting to see Destiny back. Uh, Team and T, the best of Shredder. Yes. Which has a reprint of issue one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Mirage story in it. So if you have always wanted to read that, <coughs> this is your chance to get it. It's a great issue, by the way. Uh, Star Wars Crimson Rain. Charles Soule is writing this. I'm curious to see what the Crimson Rain story is going to bring back into the Star Wars canon because this is very much like the Timothy Zahn books and all of that time. And so I'm curious to see if we're going to see a lot of the old Star Wars stuff coming back. Amazing Spider-Man 80. Bay because we're doing the. This is a beyond tie-in. And so we got to add an extra number instead of just continuing to go. It is not about Beyonce. Your best friend or whatever. Oh, Bay. Yeah. Your girl. Your your that's a it's your person, your significant other. Yeah. Oh. Justice League Infinity. This is the one based on the cartoon Justice League cartoon. Captain America versus Iron Man issue one. These guys are always at each other's throats. I don't know why. I thought they were friends. I don't know because Iron Man's. Douche. Uh, Green Lantern issue nine is out, um, and it's got uh, my girl from Far Sector in it, which I'm very excited about. Oh, nice! Uh, Fantastic Four life story. We're up to the 2000s. Mark, this Mark, Mark Russell. Russell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been great. I really enjoyed that book. Doctor Death of Doctor Strange. This is the Blade issue. I don't know why Blade's a part of Doctor Strange's death and the Darkhold, but he's everywhere right now because he's coming. Well, he was in um, Doctor Strange Damnation. As yeah. Well. He's, he's getting some love. This beautiful Peach Momoko Devil's Reign Electra cover is really all it's about. If you are reading Daredevil, this is where your story goes. Uh, Marvel does this thing that confuses people all the time, and they do things like Amazing Spider-Man 80 Point Bay. Uh, Devil's Reign is, if you are reading Daredevil, pick up Devil's Reign, because that is the continuation of Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil, and he will not have any more issues of Daredevil until Devil's Reign is over. So it is where the story went. Okay. Uh, Batman 118. This is the start of Williamson's run on Batman. Hey. So if you were over Tynion or if you're interested in the new story, here it is. And a new first appearance, right? Probably. A villain? Probably. It's a new villain? Giant Size Black Cat, the Infinity Score. This is the end of Jed McKay's run on Black Cat attempting to get Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet. Mm -hmm. uh, Space Corp. I didn't get to read it. It's the only reason it's in this section instead of like hot new titles because that's number one that I'm curious to find out about. Made in Korea. This is issue six of um, an ongoing story about an AI that kind of becomes a little more alive than it should. Uh, Arkham City, The Order of the World. I've heard this is the like Gotham book to be picking up. That it's mm. a really cool story about the rest of Gotham and not Batman. Looks very Grant Morrison-esque. Speaking of Batman, Batman Ooh. 89. Uh, if you are a fan of Batman 89, you need to be picking up the movie. What? You need to be picking up that story. There's a Robin now in that universe? Uh, apparently. I can't. I, I can't know. do it. Crush and Lobo, issue 7 of 8. We're almost done with the Crush and Lobo story, which I've heard has been adorable. Um, the Joker presents a puzzle box. Also, Matthew Rosenberg uh, writing a Joker puzzle story, which I feel like should have been the Riddler, which is on that cover. <laughs> I know. Very confused. One Star Squadron, issue one of six. 
feels Sorry. very excited now. <laughs> Sorry, I see some of those characters that I enjoy. Right, Phil loves the obscure, underrated characters. Uh, do you see uh, Soul Plumber? If you're a fan of last podcast on the left, you should be reading this story because it's their story. Superman, Son of Kal-El, Annual. The only annual that didn't come out last week versus DC. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, Swamp Thing, issue 10, Ram V Swamp Thing with these beautiful covers. Cover. Dude, yeah. I, the, the cover B on Swamp Thing, usually, you know, you want to buy the cover A if you're speculating on books, but if you are buying Swamp Thing, just buy the cover B because it's always free. It's also got the classic looking style font a little and bit. And I with. think a lot of them have been Yannick Paquette. Uh, covers. I know Yannick Paquette's been doing a lot of the Catwoman ones, too. Uh, World of Krypton, issue one of six. Bellaccio. Yeah. Uh, Amazing Fantasy, the miniseries, issue five. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous cover. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, Peach Momoka's Demon Days. This is the creator's cut. It's got a lot of really cool sketches showing you how Peach Momoko uh, created a lot of the characters from Demon Days. Hellion. Speaking of Peach Momoko, this is the coolest Madeline Pryor cover possibly ever. Um, Basilisk is back. Cullen Bunn, Chapter 5. Uh, what? We're not talking about Cullen Bunn this week? No, we're not talking about Cullen Bunn this week. No Cullen Bloom. Bunn. Uh, this is issue something. I already forgot. It I is issue four. four, yes. The finale of Cherry Blackbird was this week. I'm, I know. I'm not talking about it because I haven't finished it, and I don't want to know any spoilers. I actually didn't read issue four because I was waiting for this one so I could read them together. Yeah. Um, because that is probably my favorite uh, scout title, right? Black Caravan. Yeah. Oh, Black, Black Caravan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lady Mechanica, back in issue hey. form, not on free comic book day. Uh, That's nice. Yeah. Nita uh, Haw's Nightmare Blog. This is out of the Philadelphia world. Uh, Nyx, issue two with the Spider-Man 300 homage cover. The Walking Dead Deluxe, the color reprints of The Walking Dead issue. I think that's 28. These come out every week because you've already read the story. So you're just buying it for the cool color editions. Yeah, of course. Uh, Radio Apocalypse, issue one. Megan Hutchinson Kate's 616 exclusive variant it is gorgeous. It is wonderful. Uh, you should buy everything that Megan does because yeah. it's perfect, wonderful. It does have a certificate of authenticity in it. And yesterday was John, the owner of 616's birthday. So happy oh, birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. He went to tell him happy birthday by uh, some 616 comics. Yeah. They They're always have great covers. Great exclusives. Great covers. Yes. And uh, Megan does tons and tons of exclusives for them, and they're always the freaking best. And we've got some more coming yeah. uh, from her and 616 soon. Uh, another thing we have in stock right now is we have cookies from Geek Sweets. Uh, and we've got Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales. And what? Oh, he's something now. I was going based off of shape. And Miles Morales and this incredible Carnage cookie. If you don't know Geek Sweets, Geek Sweets is actually our own Josh Finlan uh, and his boyfriend Jay's uh, company. They Josh started creating these cookies. Uh, I guess we first learned about it during our birthdays when Josh created cookies for me and Matt. And then during our Josie and the Pusscats event, Josh was like, hey, Jay and I are just going to start a company and do this. And they did. And... It is the most delicious, delectable company in the world. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah, my gosh. I um, I was greatly impressed. They have a caramel brownie. They, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, ooh, what? in the back. <laughs> did you put a Bat City board did, on the... Oh, did. Josh's. My favorite one, the Venom cookie. I think this is the last one, isn't yeah. it? Okay. This is the Venom cookie. Josh killed it with this design work. Oh, my God. Um, it's a sugar cookie. They're sugar cookies. They're frosted sugar cookies. Everything is homemade. Uh, they make the batter. They make the frosting. They do it all. They also, hand, Josh hand sculpts mm -hmm. these cookies mm -hmm. uh, without a projector or cookie cutter or anything. And then he hand paints them also without any kind of stenciling work. It's a lot of skill. It's a lot of skill. I mean, this carnage alone. Yeah. And then, uh, like you okay. said, they have, mm -hmm. oh, Chad says claim a carnage cookie. <laughs> We have, it, more Chad. we have more Carnage cookies. I'll just sit here like I'm going to put this off to the side. We have another one. Right. You can both have a Carnage cookie. Uh, we, uh, 
the you were saying they have the brownies. Jay makes brownies and cupcakes, and Jay Everything. always makes like the most like intricate cupcakes, oh like they're like Oreo cookie or Reese's peanut butter cups. And then they have all the design work on top. He made spider web themed cupcakes <laughs> uh, for our spider event yesterday, and. Uh, yeah, he's got, they've got so many great things. They've just made a, their new thing is an apple streusel cheesecake. Yeah, was, which is like an apple pie on top yeah. of cheesecake. Oh my God. It's, it's, oh my God. Like, it's like if you made an apple pie with cheesecake <laughs> as the crust. He brought, they brought something to my birthday party. And I don't remember what it was, but it was like, I think it was called like butter cake. Oh, or it something. was the Missouri. Butter. The what? Gooey butter. Gooey butter cake. It's a Missouri and it had, favorite. Uh, the, um, powdered sugar on top it, and I looked at it and I was like dude this looks gross and he's like no just try it and I was like oh my god okay <laughs> it'll kill you with it's goodness oh for sure for sure um, yeah. I think this is if you're a fan of comics and you're a fan of sweet things this is like the place to go if you need stuff for like parties yeah you know if you're hosting a party and you want something his designs have been phenomenal phenomenal He's he did some stuff for the um for the Chris Sheehan signing, mm -hmm. uh, the Josie and the Pussycat cookies were great. I mean, uh, they just did an, an event <clears throat> for a, a dog Christmas themed party. Yeah, I so saw they that. only made all that. like the favorite dogs from different things. So they had like Santa's Little Helper mm -hmm. and the Max from the Grinch and uh, all kinds of stuff. So if you're not following them, they're on Instagram yes. at, at Geek Sweets ATX. So you can go there to like book them for your event or uh, invite them out to your market. Or if you're just a regular person who wants a lot of cookies, uh, give Josh and Jay a holler. Uh, they're wonderful <laughs> and amazing and everything is delicious that they make. And they're also bat fam. So support your bat fam and buy, uh, cookies from, from, and brownies and other things from them. If it wasn't highly unprofessional, I would eat one right now. That's fair. I mean, we're going to in about 15 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, that said, don't forget, we're going to do one prize at the end of the night. Until then, we've got some trades. So, if you need to read some more Ninja Turtles, we've got the Ninja Turtles Color Classics Volume 1. It's got what issues in it? It is the Mirage issues 1 through 7, and then the Raphael and Michelangelo Micro Series one-shots. And those one-shots are just as great as the ongoing series. Mm -hmm. uh, Mirage Turtles is easily some of the best comics out there in ever. ever. I mean, they're so really well done, and uh, it's great to see them fully colored like this. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of like the Walking Dead stuff, where it, it's not as great as the original, Yeah. Um, but it's still nice to see. It's, yeah. it's cool. Uh, crossover Volume 1, Kids Love Chains. This is uh, the first six issues of Crossover, I believe. If you are not caught up on Crossover, this is a great way to do it. Um, it's, it's just beautiful. And like we said, it's a great book for comic fans of all time. So, yes. uh, back in stock, Volume Ooh. 1 of Once in Future, which I keep oh, being told all the time nice. that I need to read it. I know I need to read it. Oh, man. I've fallen right. so behind because it's up to issue yeah, like 19 or 20, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's still available. We can order more. So but this is one of those books that, like, everyone who's picking this up is, this is their book. This is the book, like, where they're like, this is the one yeah. you need to be reading. You need to be reading. <laughs> I want to see, get my hand in uh, the oh. America Chavez, Made in the USA. This is the recent miniseries of America Chavez. If you didn't read it, now's a great time to grab a trade. It's also a great gift for people for Christmas. Yes. Uh, speaking of great Christmas gifts, we have the Fortnite, Batman Fortnite Zero Point. This has all of the code for your Fortnite fans in it. So uh, if somebody missed all those issues, this is a great way to do it. If you have somebody who wants the single issues, I might have most of them in stock. Uh, the Swamp Thing, Ram V. This is volume Ooh. one of Ram V Swamp Thing. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> one yeah. through four, and then Future State one and two. Um, I've made this statement, and I'm still sticking <coughs> by it. I think it's the best <coughs> Swamp Thing outside of Alan Moore. Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. This is the Beta Ray Bill mini series, finally in trade form. So if you missed the Beta Ray Bill series, which a lot of you did because it sold out so fast everywhere, here is a chance to get it. Uh, and it's Daniel Warren Johnson, yes, which is just toy. fits so perfectly for this book. Um, I was never. I don't know much about Beta Ray Bill, um, but I read this just because it was Daniel Warren Johnson. That's fair. So. Yeah. 
And that's it. That's it. That's all the trades. We do have Wolven Heart Volume 1 somewhere in stock, but I don't know where it is right now. It's on that wall over there. Oh, okay. yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's fine. You don't need to go get it. Okay. It's fine. Uh, comic industry news. A uh, very special thank you to everybody who came out last night for our uh, Spider-Man 2 movie party. A uh, huge, huge shout out to Afterthoughts, the band that performed. Those guys are, and girl, uh, those people are amazing. Uh, we had such a blast. Um, Carson, their lead singer, was just having such a fun time the entire time, and it made the entire event fun for everyone. So uh, thank you to Afterthoughts for coming along uh, and playing. They did play Hero, which oh was my, gosh, my precursor. They also played Vindicated um, and so many more fun songs. So if you, uh, if you missed that out, if you missed that, check them out on Instagram. They're at afterthoughts.etx on Instagram. You should definitely follow them. Um, a thank you to Geek Suites for being there. Again, follow them. Geet Sweeks, Geet Sweeks, ATX. Oh my gosh, I made that up and I still can't say it. <laughs> um, I'm like, I made that Instagram handle with Josh and I still ruined it. Um, and then, um, yeah, it was, we had a crazy awesome silent auction. Uh, thank you to Torpedo ATX for getting the movie and the band and bringing them all in because that was wonderful. Um, they're Torpedo Productions. Uh, they're doing all kinds of events throughout the city. Um, and thank you to, again, everybody that came. It was a lot of fun. Thank you to our spider fam that showed up, our Miles <laughs> yeah. and our uh, Peter. It was great to have you. And uh, to all the Bat City volunteers who we literally couldn't do anything without you all. Uh, thank you for showing up yesterday and helping us make that happen. Um, and then important news, Matt and I uh, will be closing the store. December 20th through the 28th. Not forever. Calm down. Don't freak out. Um, really, that's only like a Wednesday through Sunday that the store is actually closed. But this store will be closed December 20th through the 28th. So the last days to do your Christmas shopping are going to be this Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, coming up this week for New Comic Book Day. Make sure you head in. Grab your new comics and any other uh, Christmas shopping you want to do. We do have gift certificates. So if you have family members or friends who you want to check out the store, you want to buy stuff um, or for you, them, or you, or just you want know, your family to get you one. Yeah, and or you have somebody who you know likes comics, but you have no idea what they read, because I know like the first time my grandparents bought me comics, they just walked in and was like, hey, we don't know what he reads, but just pick stuff out. And they picked all the stuff that I already had, like V for Vendetta, like all the classic stuff that you would expect. Um, so yeah, sometimes just yeah. go with the gift certificate, you know, let them come in here and go crazy. Yeah, you weren't on that shot at all while you did Sorry. that whole story. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was like, this <laughs> cool. So I could have been eating the cookie? You could have been eating your cookie that whole time. Um, yeah, so we do have gift certificates available. This is the last week. If you have something you're looking for for somebody, come in, ask Matt and I. We're happy to help you find a gift, um, lead you towards that gift certificate. We're also want to make sure everybody gets their comics this week. Um, and on that note, this is a great time. Um, if you have not been consistently purchasing your box you are going to be receiving emails and everything this week if you're a subscriber to remind you that it is the end of the year now is a great time to come in and clean out your box and if you're not planning to come in and do that please get send us a message let us know what's going on with your um subscription box because we want to make sure that as the year wraps up we know where everybody is and that every where everybody stands and all these things so we can continue that communication into the new year um uh, oh, yes, and if you didn't see Aww. the very, very sad news this week, uh, we learned this week that George Perez, uh, who is everybody's favorite comic uncle, is uh, going to be passing away. Uh, he has, I believe they said less than six months, I think it was two months to live, something of that nature. Um, his He has pancreatic cancer and it has taken hold and he has chosen to not live out his days just in a hospital doing treatments. He'd rather spend the time celebrating his life with his family, his friends, and of course his fans, which includes all of us. Um, so if you have a favorite George Perez memory, please share that with us. If you have a favorite George Perez story, that is just um, your absolute favorite thing George Perez ever worked on. Uh, mm. Share that too. His Teen Titans run. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how I fell in love with all of the, the teenage characters of the DC universe, is, is all that early stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm bummed too because I, I wanted to go to Dragon Con next year. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that that's there. the only con that he said he would be doing. Once his health started to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, he got a little bit older, he was like, that's the con I'm going to do from now on. So that was my plan. Um, so that's, that's, that's a real bummer. That's, that's going to be a tough one to yeah. lose. Absolutely. Uh, for me. Um, I was telling Nigel <laughs> and one of our uh, customers that were in the store today that um, when I was in my early days of going to conventions, I actually, I was walking around a convention, and I believe I was wearing my Rainbow Bright costume, which is probably the best costume I've ever made. I was walking around uh, this convention, and a guy comes up to me in a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. I have no <laughs> idea who he is. And he starts talking about my costume and how much he loves it, and we're just, like, having this conversation about it. And he's like, oh, are you going to be here tomorrow? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what are you wearing tomorrow? And I was like, oh, I'm going to be Deathstroke. And I was like, it's a gender bent one, but it's not Ravager. It's Deathstroke. And he was because the eye patch is on yeah. the side. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy gets it. Like, I'm so excited that somebody finally gets like this reference because that's always my thing when mm-hmm. I'm explaining that I'm making this gender bent Deathstroke. Like, no, it's not Ravager. And there, and I, and I spent years having to have this argument still to this day. But I'm like, yes. And he's like, well, how did you do that one? Like, what's it look like? And I'm like describing it. And he's asking all these questions. And I'm like, so happy that somebody cares about this Deathstroke costume. And again, no idea who he is. Never seen a picture of George Perez. But also, this is like years and years ago in early days. And so, for me, going to cons. And so, I go back to my friend's table. And I'm sitting there talking to my friend. I was like, I'm so happy. I just met this dude who totally cared about my Deathstroke costume I'm wearing tomorrow. I'm like describing it. And he's asking all these questions. He's super into it. I, you never meet anybody who's that into Deathstroke. It's so great. And he's like, oh, that's so cool. And I was like, oh, my God, that's the guy. And I point to him. And he's like, dude, that's that's George Perez. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I don't think my face has ever been as red as it was in that moment. I'm like, I just literally talked to the guy who invented Deathstroke about my Deathstroke costume for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Not like, all, not knowing that he was George Perez. I was like, I knew George Perez created Deathstroke. I did not know he was George Perez. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. And... The next day, he was never at his table when I was around, mm-hmm. so I couldn't ever actually get a picture in my Deathstroke costume uh, with George, and that is, I'm so sad about that now, um, more than ever, but I just, it was, it was so cool to be able to have, like, this moment where I got to explain to the person who created the character, like, how excited I was about the character and about the costume, and not, and just have this authentic cost con conversation with him because I didn't know that he was George Perez. So I wasn't like fangirling right. about him. I was just fangirling about the character with somebody who was equally as excited about the character. And I love that he still cared that much about these characters he's worked with. Like he was just a fan. This character oh, he yeah. created, he yeah. was just like also excited about this character still all these years later. And I think that just shows so much about George's character and the fact that he would stop people to talk about, like, I mean, I was wearing a Rainbow Bride costume. Yeah. He stopped to talk about that. Like, he just really loved being a part of the scene. He was always walking around and talking to people. Yeah, and you could tell, too, there's a lot of interviews and stuff for you. You could tell that he definitely enjoyed what he did. Um, and that's something I appreciated mm-hmm. as well, where it's just like, okay, you're in this because you love doing it, mm-hmm. and you're really great at it. Really Your great art at it. is just really, really good. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I'll be curious if he's doing any appearances. I heard that he was doing a signing. That they, I think there might be one more signing is what I've heard people say Like that have come in. They're like, oh, yeah, I think George Perez is doing one more signing. I don't know. I don't know any details on it. I'd have to look into it. But he's. I don't think he's doing any more appearances necessarily. Oh, uh, so it'll be more like a CGC yeah, type thing? Yeah, it's something like that. Mm. I don't think he's actually going to be. So we need, like, I don't know where and if he's doing it for sure, um, but I've just heard, like, <laughs> literally, like, three different people mentioned it, like, a signing of some sort that was happening with him. Uh, but I don't know, so we'll have to look into that. I haven't seen anything on, like, a CGC website or coming from CGC about it. But They posted a thing that said that he was just here and we'd love to have him, and it would have been great if he would be able to come back another time, but this is terrible. Uh, Guillermo said he wants to. He said he wants to do one more signing and appearance because he wants to, <coughs> he wants to be able to take pictures with his fans. So he does want it to be an in person thing. Hmm. So keep an eye out for that if you're you know need that that chance. If to. anyone wants to travel somewhere to go see George Perez, I'm on board, and I'm hoping because I think he lives in Atlanta, and that's why Dragon Con was his, mm-hmm. the place that he goes. 
So I have a sister who lives in Atlanta, so we have room and board covered, right? <laughs> I can only probably take one or two people, <laughs> right? But I've got our room and board covered. <laughs> Just saying. Stop. Don't don't start claiming, guys. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. This yeah. isn't don't a start claim claiming. situation. I'm like bored, you said. I know. I was yeah. like, well, what board is this? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the food? That's What's the board the of yeah. a room and board situation. Oh, I see. Usually, it's the food is covered. <laughs> Chad said, "Claim." Uh, no, I said, "No claiming, Chad." <laughs> I'll cover food too. I'll cover food. <laughs> All right. I mean. Gomez says he's down for a trip. You're gonna have a long line of people coming at you, Uh But our, as as most importantly, uh, obviously our our hearts and thoughts are with yeah. uh, George's family and him through these times. And um, I love how much it brought the fandom of comic books together. Like it's just been an outpouring of love on the internet <coughs> yeah. uh, for him. So um, you know we're with you. And if you do have stories, he wants to hear them. Uh, he wants to hear, like, all about your favorite things and your favorite interactions and things like that. Like, p- they're asking for people to post them on his on his actual George Prez, like, uh, fan page. Because uh, he is reading all of those to just have those moments nice. with his fans still. So, um, all right. Uh, we'll pick it back up with a prize. <laughs> Prize. Oh my gosh, we're only going to have to do that one we time from now on. We only had to do that one time. And we're going to do a little Aftershock number one bundle. So we've got Campisi number one, Silver City number one, and The Heathens number one. And you are going to get all three of these Ooh. comics. I know what. Uh, so in order to get these, you have to tell me what color did colors there's two uh did steve ditko originally intend for spider-man's costume to be so you know they they made spider-man a hyphenated name i don't know if you all know this they made spider-man a hyphenated name because stan lee was worried that a name that started with an s and ended with man would be confused for superman Mm. and of course now everybody's assumption is like oh and he has the same colors and all of that but steve ditko originally intended spider-man's costume to be two different colors if you know what they are you get all three of these and if you don't know what they are just start putting color combinations together i can't even imagine him in different colors yeah it wouldn't have worked it definitely would not have worked in the colors that steve ditko was going to put him in yeah what even else bj that is correct orange (laughs) and purple (laughs) (laughs) why i want to see that now yeah he, I want to see that. So he, he would have been like the Hobgoblin. He would have been Hobgoblin, essentially. Uh, that was the original color palette. Was Steve Ditko wanted it to be orange and purple, and he did not win that color mm. choice. Which would not have really worked for Spider-Man's suit, in my opinion. I think it would not have the like longevity of look if it was in yeah. purple. Juan, if you're in the chat, can you, draw, can you make that up for me? Just <laughs> give me like a, a rough sketch of... Right, Spider Man in an orange and purple yeah. costume. <laughs> we'll see. He's not in the chat, but we'll have to shoot want a yeah. message to get him to draw that. I'll bother him about it. Yeah. Um, cool. So that is our entire show for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, like I said, don't forget we are only open this week, uh, starting on Wednesday because we're never open on Mondays and Tuesdays. So Wednesday through this Sunday is your last chance to come in, get your comics for um, until the end of the month almost because we'll be uh, close the 20th through the 28th so come in this week grab your books uh grab any kiss christmas gifts you need um any of those and uh as usual chad's got your list of what's out this week berserker number six hulk number two wonder girl number six defenders number four cloaked number one witch blood number nine firefly holiday special we ride titans number one no holds bar number one um those are some new vault titles Mm -hmm. uh for the bat fan my date with monsters number two finally uh he who fights with monsters number four out number three from awa the rush number two also finally i was just wondering when that one was coming up oh nice time before time number eight maze book number four bat girls number one tmnt 124 primordial number four and one Wonder Woman number 782. What a great week. Great week for comics. So come in on Wednesday. The Phil and I will be here. Matt will be here. It'll be a lot of fun. And this Wednesday, I will actually be here all day. Yeah, so come hang out with Phil. Something I've never done before. 
and exciting. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you uh, on Wednesday, and if not, we'll see you here next weekend. There's music, isn't there? There's music. I'll just see.